Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if Naruto gets Ino Kasina pregnant. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. It was a sunny day in the village hidden in leaves. The streets were bursting with kids and the usual joy that lightened the atmosphere when a certain blonde wasn't taking his weekly stroll through the streets. It was always like that. Should that certain someone walk through the streets, the joy vanishes into thin air and a new kind of feeling marches through the streets with a demonic stare that threatens to devour one person and one person only. The beginning had not been in this form and shape. The village had seen better days. The hatred, unbearable hatred was birthed when the Kayubi appeared in a cloud of smoke, and then went on a killing spree inside the village. It had been summoned by a mad Uchiha. The only thought was destruction and destruction was what the Biju dished out. Konoha had never seen such tragedy occurring right in its front yard since its founding, but seven years ago, the worst happened. The spoiled child that has always had someone with big weapons and a large shield to protect it was finally beat up, by the one being that couldn't be killed. In its early years, Konoha always had the likes of the Shodai Hokage, a revered god of shinobi, the Naidame, the god of water, and the Sandame, the professor, the god of shinobi, the Yandaimi as well hailed as Konoha's yellow flash. With its first beating, Konoha learned to hate, and they'd held onto their hatred for years and it didn't seem as if they were going to let go anytime soon. The world had turned against the Yandaimi's wishes, instead of celebrating in joy with a hero, Konoha labored in hatred, troubled with thoughts of vengeance, yet powerless to do anything. They probably weren't like, who cares what a dead man thinks? The Yandaimi Hokage is dead, he couldn't feel what they felt. In all his life Naruto has known that Konoha hates him. Aside from the love his mother gave him, the other feeling he had learned to know was hatred. He saw it every day of his life, he saw it in his bloody nightmares, he saw it in the eyes of the ignorant fools that crawled around the village streets on a daily basis. He didn't think or believe for a second that such a hateful village could ever learn to love, all it knew was hatred. For the past seven years Naruto has been dodging bullets of death glares and fangs of curses that have been constantly thrown at him. Each time he took a walk around the village, his presence only managed to attract the worst things that lurk behind the shadows to walk into daylight. If there were vampires in Konoha, they would walk through the sunny streets just to murder him with their glares if he chose to entertain them, by parading himself while he dances to the beat of the hatred. Life has not been easy for him. He has been forced to be an adult, he was forced to grow up, understand things at a tender age, all because of one decision one foolish person made. Minato had cursed both him and his mother's life by choosing to make him a Jinchuriki of the Kayubi and then die. His mother always tells him the story on his birthday, the story of the day he was born, the story of a nine-tailed mountain-tall furball wreaking havoc in the village. It was some cursed fate that the day he was born, that masked fool chose to rip the Kayubi out of his mother and force it to attack Konoha. Naturally, being Konoha's leader, his stupid father chose to stuff the biju in his gut, the day he was born. Worst of all, he pathetically died, leaving him to carry the burden with his poor mother, the only person he truly loves. No one cared who he was related to, as long as he was Uzumaki Naruto, Kashina's son and the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, Konoha would always hate him it would always curse his existence. His mother was forced to watch this happen, she was forced to watch her only child learn to hate, she was forced to helplessly watch the hero twisted into a villain that was one attack away from being stoned to death. Naruto didn't care about his pain, but his mother's pain was greater. For her sake, he had been forced to grow. Because of his mother's pain, Naruto has learned to hate two things. The Uchiha who started it by extracting the Kayubi from his mother and the ignorant monkeys that paraded in the village wearing the masks of humans. There were so many days that Naruto stood at the Hokage monument, just to stare down at the village that reeked of hatred. He could now even curse from a disease no matter how many times he looked at this forsaken village, and asked himself, was his and his mother's pain worth saving these fools? The answer was always no. He could be used as a pawn for all he cared, but his mother? She was too precious to suffer the torment Minato's choice has made her go through. Itachi flashed beside Naruto at the Hokage monument. The blonde was wearing short dark blue pants. A red shirt with the Uzumaki swirl printed on the front in white. He also wore dark blue shinobi boots, coupled with bandages around his wrists. 
His hair stood in all its spiky blonde, cerulean blue eyes, and the whisker marks. The last piece was an impassive mask that the Uchiha was positive his mother has only seen on a few occasions, despite the mask being forever present. The genius Uchiha took off his Anbu mask, before looking down on the village. The past years haven't been easy, to the Uchiha and the Uzumaki. When Kashina confirmed that it had been indeed an Uchiha who extricated the Kayubi from her, his clan had been dealt a major blow. No one trusted them anymore. They blamed them for the attack. For the Uzumaki, Naruto held the biju, much worse when it became public that Kashina had held the biju as well. How long has it been? He thought things would change over the years. But the waters do not seem like they are going to dry up anytime soon. The only thing that made him smile were that the main suspects, Uchiha and Uzumaki have always stuck together, no matter what. Itachi glanced at the seven-year-old beside him. He respected Shisui, but there was no one he respected more than this boy. He may dislike the boy's obvious, no love, for the villagers, but the blonde had the will of a war-hardened shinobi. Itachi has never seen the blonde cry, he has never seen him look weak and vulnerable, despite the fact that each street in Konoha was a curse to him. The villagers may play ball with him, they may roast him under the lights of the stars on the 10th of October, they may drag him through the very pits of hell, but Naruto always came up without tears, he always came up looking strong with a mask of defiance and impassiveness. He was just seven, a Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, the most hated person of Konoha. Has been insulted every day of his life from A to Z, but Itachi has never seen him shed tears. My mother has cried enough, it was the response Itachi got from the blonde when he questioned. To Naruto, his mother's tears were enough, there was no need for him to waste his tears as well. His little brother was spoiled, a baby, he was no Naruto. The blonde had yet to kill, but Itachi had no doubt that he wouldn't flinch if someone got killed before his very eyes. How he wished his foolish little brother was strong as this boy. Perhaps it was because Sasuke was sheltered, he had everything he needed. Naruto had to fight lions in order to feed. The blonde had nothing, but fought for everything he had. Itachi respected that. He may have graduated from the academy at seven, but he was no Naruto. His younger brother was already in the academy and the blonde had yet to join, but he was still no Naruto. There was no one like him. He and Naruto shared something. They were willing to do anything possible and impossible to protect what they loved. What exactly? That was a story for another day. They let you out so soon today? My assignments were completed, Itachi said. The sight is pleasant, isn't it? Depends on where you're looking. There were so many times that Itachi has asked the question, and Naruto always gave the exact answer, said in the exact tone. He never missed a beat, almost like he just played a record on the previous time he asked the question. Even so, as long as they still maintained their friendship, he would not stop asking the question, not until Naruto gives him a different answer. It remains to be seen if Naruto's answer will change, just as it remains to be seen if Konoha will ever change its attitude towards the blonde. Itachi could only hope. The hope made the thin as a needle, but it was something. Something Itachi could hold on to and press on with the march of life. You should come to Anbu HQ with me. I can simply say you're my apprentice and wish to join the Anbu. He was a captain, and he believed that Naruto could learn a few things. A little appealing, but no thanks. I have no interest in becoming an Anbu. Naruto knew exactly what being Anbu meant, and he had no interest in following along those lines. He had no desire to protect this village, not even in his worst nightmare. You don't have to join the Anbu. In the past months, I've not had time to honor our meetings because of the overload of work I have to do for both the Sandame and Danzo, Itachi said. I also have my responsibilities as a member of the Uchiha clan. Naruto turned to face Itachi. He gave the Uchiha a look, offered no sympathy whatsoever. He then looked down at the village once more before opening his mouth, your love for Konoha truly knows no bounds, the blonde said. No wonder your family is envious. I'm a shinobi of this village. My loyalty was sworn to this village. It's only natural that I love it. Yes, but there should be limits. Konoha didn't bring you to this world. The Uchiha did. Naruto said. He didn't go further on the matter. You can spend two weeks away from the village. I can't be away from mother for that long. She needs me. My mother will be with her when we're away. The Uchiha clan will always protect her, besides, like my mother, your mother was a janin. She doesn't need a brat to protect her. 
Naruto still shook his head. The thought of leaving his mother for two weeks was no different than staring down into abyss. He couldn't leave his mother. In your current state, you can't protect anyone, Naruto. If someone like me chose to attack your mother, what could you possibly do? Could you defend her when you can't even lay a hand on me? Naruto frowned, clenched his fists, and remained quiet for a few moments. I will talk to mother about it, he finally said. Itachi nodded before standing up. Come, let us get some lunch before heading towards our training ground. Later, if Itachi had been with his beloved younger brother, he would have been carrying him over his shoulders, but with Naruto, it was a different story. No matter how tired the blonde was, he always refused to be carried. If he was exhausted, he would rather sit and allow his body to rest before heading home. The rare moments he carried the blonde was when he was out cold. Naruto preferred pushing forward if he had the strength. He didn't accept anyone's hand unless it was absolutely necessary. He didn't take things from anyone. He liked to earn whatever it was that he was given. Itachi could safely say that the blonde had been forced to be like this because he had nothing in the beginning, but earned what he has. My attempts in the fireball are really pitiful, Naruto said as the two walked towards Itachi's house, at the Uchiha compound. Sasuke did better than him in this area, and that bothered him greatly. Your progress is nothing to complain about, Naruto. Unlike Sasuke, you had to learn to convert your chakra into fire type. Your natural affinity is wind, so learning fire-based jutsu was always going to be difficult. Still, though the blonde failed to see it, his progress was not good. If fire was his natural affinity, he would have learned the jutsu faster than Sasuke. That may be so, but I'd hope to be done by now. A frown settled on his face for a few moments as he stared at his failure. I should get the sand dame to teach me wind manipulation. You're more of a fire person, and can't offer anything I would consider useful. Itachi took no offense in those words. He wasn't a wind user after all. Will he be able to do so? He does have a lot to do. Naruto shrugged, depends on how I ask, he said before falling silent. Itachi shook his head. Naruto really took advantage of the sand dame's good nature whenever the opportunity presented itself. Well, the old man was always more than willing to help the blonde. He felt guilty for failing to make Naruto's life better, and giving in to the blonde's desires helped soothe his burdened soul a bit. The two slowly but surely made their way towards Itachi's house, where they were going to have dinner together, with the Uzumaki as they did every Friday for the past three years. Nisan, Sasuke beamed up, seeing his older brother return home, just in time for dinner. You're a little late today. Itachi smiled slightly at his beloved brother, I was a little busy, he said. Just then, Naruto walked behind the Uchiha, making Sasuke frown. He looked at his brother after noting that Naruto had some bruises on him, were you out training with him, again? Itachi nodded. Sasuke folded his hands across his chest, puffed his cheeks a bit as he pouted, you never take me to the training field these days, Nisan. You're always with him. Itachi ruffled up Sasuke's hair making the younger Uchiha red a bit with embarrassment. He hated it when his brother did something like that in front of Naruto, I will take you tomorrow, and it will just be the two of us. Really? Sasuke almost shouted. His brother gave a small nod before walking past him. Sasuke was left with the brother stealer, Naruto, he grunted. Sasuke, Naruto responded with a grunt of his own. Has my mother arrived? No, Sasuke said. Naruto said nothing in response. He simply turned and headed towards the exit. Sasuke didn't need to be told where the blonde was going. He already knew. Naruto was going to wait for his mother outside. After Naruto disappeared from his sight, Sasuke smiled. He sped towards his brother's room for some alone time with Itachi. They didn't get enough of those moments these days, especially with Naruto around, and Itachi working for the Anbo. It didn't start like this. Things were good for him, but it started to change when his father permitted Naruto's mother to move into their compound after some villagers had continuously harassed them by breaking the windows of their house. Since then, the two Uzumaki spent most of their nighttime in this house. Sasuke, Makoto called, seeing her younger son speeding past the kitchen. Is Naruto waiting for his mother outside? Sasuke nodded. What did I tell you? Sasuke frowned, but didn't repeat what his mother had told him regarding Naruto's behavior. But Ka-san, Nisan is home and I want to spend some time with him. Makoto raised her index finger, no but Sasu-chan. Go wait with him, 
You will have your time with Itachi after dinner. Sasuke stared at his mother, who stared back, fine, he said. There is no need to force yourself, Naruto said, coming into the view with his mother while holding her right hand. Sasuke looked straight at the blonde for a few moments before looking at his mother, can I go now? Naruto always sucked the energy out of his system when he looked into his eyes. Makoto nodded, don't take too long. Tell your brother to hurry up as well. Sasuke was already heading up the stairs. The ex Junin looked at her friend and her son before smiling, ah, that boy really does love his brother. Almost like how someone I know dotes on his mother, Kashina said, walking over to Makoto. At least you don't have your son following you wherever you go whenever he gets the chance. Makoto smiled, looking down at the small form of Naruto, he has changed you know. Two years ago, he couldn't be away from your sight for an hour without going hysterical. It didn't matter that the blonde was right there with them. Kashina chuckled at the thought of those memories, remind me to get Itachi a sword as a thank you for the change he brought to my son. The following day, Ichiraku Ramen, Kakashi's eyes subtly glanced at the blonde on his right, sitting on a stool while eating his second bowl of miso ramen. Even though the glance was a steal, the Junin knew that Naruto would notice his eyes. There was hardly any eye that could stare at his figure that he wouldn't notice. The spoils of being the most hated person in Konoha. The blonde had to look over his shoulder each time he walked through the village, just in case someone foolish tried anything. Getting one over the blonde for a civilian was unlikely though. Naruto may not be able to defend himself against a shinobi, but he wouldn't allow himself to be beaten by a civilian. If that happened, it was his pride being beaten. He has watched the blonde avoid blows from civilians after he had insulted them for their ignorance and foolishness. No one in the village has ever laid a hand on the blonde, no one would even dare should he be with his mother. Kashina wasn't afraid to rip the intestines out of anyone who as much as glared to her son. Worse, she had to be restrained if someone insulted her son or called him, demon, in her very presence. The former Junin had killed someone with her chakra chains for insulting both her and Naruto, even worse, spitting on the blonde. You could insult Kashina Uzumaki, but you never went after her son. There was a limit there, and anyone who went past it, had suffered the consequences. When are you going to join the academy? Kakashi asked before adding, the others in your age group are already a part of the academy. Sasuke started last year. Naruto shrugged indifferently, I don't want to and I won't join the academy. It is not a necessity for me to join when it won't offer me anything that supplement my way of life. You can't become a shinobi if you don't go through the academy. Naruto, everyone went to the academy. Even the third was once an academy student. Even he went to the academy, the three legendary Sanins went to the academy. I don't have to be a shinobi to protect mother, Naruto simply said. Being a shinobi also meant he had to provide services to Konoha, and he didn't want any of that. Perhaps if he was forced to supply for both him and his mother, then he would consider the path of a shinobi. But as it stands, being a shinobi was not in his plans. If he got the right training, he would eventually be strong enough to protect his mother and ensure that she was safe, always. If there was anything detested, his was fighting for the protection of this rotten village. It was only good for him now because it offered both him and his mother protection. This protection did come at a cost though, but it was better than living on the run. As long as he, he had his mother and she had him, they couldn't be miserable with their lives. Kakashi sighed. Even in his current form, Naruto would stand in front of something as fearsome as the Kayubi if the cause was to protect his mother. The boy may be smart, but when it came to protecting his mother, Naruto loses all sense of reason and rationality. Well, Sasuke will hop into all the glory at the academy. Don't you know, he is already seen as the genius in his class. Sasuke's efforts were good for his clan. Itachi was seen as the only light in the Uchiha clan, but if Sasuke grew well, he would lift the shadows cast upon the clan with the help of his beloved brother. Kakashi didn't believe for a second that Sasuke would do better than Naruto if the blonde was in the same space as him. Naruto's forced maturity made him think more broader than Sasuke. Once again, Naruto shrugged, he can take all the glory. It is good for the Uchiha, not that he cared that much anyway. Academy glory doesn't help protect my mother, but being strong enough to withstand all foes protects her. The only person who was going to make the blonde go to the academy was Kashina. Naruto's mother has talked to him about it, 
but she's never gone that extra mile to make him go even though he doesn't want to. Kakashi also knew that Naruto didn't want to go to the academy because it would rob him of the time he could spend with his mother. Kakashi, Naruto started, his tone quiet, this automatically alerted the Junin that the blonde wanted to know his opinion on a matter he was dealing with. Itachi wishes me to follow him in Anbu. Kakashi frowned. The life of an Anbu was full of secrets and it wasn't one he would wish for anyone. However, Naruto was a different matter. Granted that he has been through hell already, the world of Anbu would suit him better than being in the academy. It would also give him the strength he needed to protect that which was precious to him. To be honest, the academy offered nothing in building a strong shinobi. Still, what would Minato sensei say about this? Minato would want his son to live his childhood to the fullest. Ah, who was he kidding? With the choice the Yandaimi made, Naruto couldn't possibly enjoy a normal life under the circumstances that surrounded him. Besides, it wasn't like what his sensei thinks matters to Naruto anyway. What do you think? Kakashi asked, feeling it was better to hear the blonde's opinion before he gives his own answer. It will help me mentally. Let us be honest, my life will only become messier when I grow up, so I will need to have the physical and mental strength to deal with everything. Working behind the scenes with the Anbu will develop me in all ways. Kakashi nodded, but, I don't want to be an Anbu. Itachi says I don't have to be one, but just do this with him to learn a few things. Secondly, it will rob me of my time with mother. I despair in the thought of leaving her in this hell for too long. I'm wounded that you don't trust me enough to protect your mother, Naruto, Kakashi said, both jokingly and seriously. Naruto knew that he had been the one protecting his mother during the time she carried him, so he should have a little trust in him. Naruto gave a simple response, mother is all I have. Kakashi understood perfectly. If something happened to his mother, Naruto wouldn't mind releasing the Kayubi and watch this village burn to the ground. Kashina was the only family Naruto had, and the only person Naruto was emotionally attached, for real. Once more again, Kakashi sighed. Things have changed a bit, but before Itachi, Naruto was always beside his mother, and he wasn't below giving anyone a threatening stare for coming between him and his beloved mother. Naruto's world was made of Kashina Uzumaki and Kashina only. Naruto himself now no longer lived in that world. The blonde was willing to dive into anything as long as it meant protecting his beloved mother. It was a concern for Konoha that Naruto had no love the village. Somewhere in the offices of Anbu HQ, Naruto was marked as an S rank flight risk. It was a fact that no one could deny, not even the Sandame. No matter how much he loves the blonde. The only reason the blonde was even in Konoha was because his mother didn't want to abandon the village her husband died protecting. Even if he leaves, Naruto was smart enough to realize that it would only risk his mother's life as they would be marked as missing nens. There was something that Naruto was not willing to do. Risk his mother's life. They were secure in Konoha, regardless of the treatment they received. If anyone so much as risked her life, then they would see the demon lying under that mask of indifference. There was a line around Kashina, and no one was supposed to cross it, not even Naruto. Have you talked to her about it? Kakashi finally asked. Naruto gave a slight shake of his head, no. You should, Kakashi said. Given everything, it shouldn't be bad for you, and it would be enough to get the elders off your back as they will think you're on the road to serve the village. It should also build you up, the Junin said. Don't you want to say that my life is already screwed up that Anbu cannot do anything but make things a little better? Naruto said, eyeing the lazy Nen. Kakashi shrugged carelessly, I don't have to say it, even your mother already knows this, though it took some doing for her to accept that Naruto lost his childhood some time ago. He didn't even have a friend his age. You have a grim way of looking at your life, Naruto, a 14-year-old Ayame said, smiling sadly as she walked over to the counter, holding another bowl of ramen for Naruto. I'm just being realistic, Naruto said. Ayame shook her head slightly. It was really sad just watching him. A seven-year-old who hung around men old enough to be his father. If he wasn't eating with the Sandame, it was Kakashi or Itachi. Four times a week it was with his mother, and there were those rare moments you'd see Jiraiya sitting beside the blonde. It was always awkward silence though. I told you allow me to change things for you, but you continuously refuse. If you'd accepted my help long ago, you would be having a wide grin on your face about now, Ayame said. With a wide smile, 
fist pump up as if she could clearly see her favorite blonde smiling at her. I doubt it, Naruto responds before digging in on his third and last bowl of ramen. Ayame nearly sighed before walking away. My beloved son must be abandoning the love he once had for his mother, Kashina's voice sounded, causing both Naruto and Kakashi to smile. Don't you love your Ka-chan anymore, Naru-chan? Not long ago, you refused to eat without your poor old mother. As the red-haired Uzumaki woman settled down beside her son, Naruto responded with an expression that would surprise most. A somewhat happy look that was complemented by the smile on his lips. Don't say that, Ka-san. You know I will always love you. Kakashi sighed. Kashina was teasing, but the seriousness in Naruto's tone made it obvious that he didn't know. Well, it shouldn't be unexpected given that he never jokes about loving his mother. Sometimes I wonder if he really is smart as he has shown to be. Kashina merely chuckled, ruffling up Naruto's hair, causing the ever so stoic blonde to blush in embarrassment. Mother, not in front of Kakashi. Why, don't you like your mother's affection anymore? Kashina gave a mock hurt look, which, ridiculously, Naruto failed to notice. The blonde held up his hands in a defensive manner, facing his mother. It's not that, I just mean that. Kashina placed her index finger on Naruto's lips, shutting him up, I'm just teasing, she said with a warm smile. Now, finish up so we can go buy you something new to wear. Naruto nodded. Kakashi smiled, seeing Naruto acting like a normal brat in front of his mother. It was refreshing to see the blonde smile. His smile only widened in front of his mother though. But the fact that it was real made him happy. Well, let me leave you two alone. Kakashi said before disappearing in a puff of smoke, but not before handing Ayame the bill for his food. I'm so jealous of you, Ayame said to Kashina. You can get Naruto to show all kinds of emotions, but I can't even get him to smile. Naruto came here every day, and Ayame has never seen him displaying more than one emotion, if any at all, to someone other than his mother. The Sandame rarely receives a tiny smile in those rare occasions along with Kakashi, with his Uchiha friend, both were depressing. She'd never seen them smile ever since they started coming to the ramen stand together. Kashina smiled, well, I am his mother. A mother knows her child best, she said, looking at her beloved Naru-chan. She knew it wasn't easy for him, it wasn't easy for her either. He may be indifferent to most things, but Kashina was happy just knowing that her Naruto was able to smile a real smile and blush in embarrassment when she was around. At least she offered him happiness. She wanted him to have more, but that seemed unlikely. Regardless, she was happy that she was alive to raise her child. Seven years ago, she watched Minato seal the Kayubi in their son, while in her weakened state, she held the biju with her chakra chains. The dead demon-consuming seal cost Minato his life. She regretted teaching him that seal. Her family had other ways of sealing bijus without the need to sacrifice one's soul to the Shinigami. She should have looked harder and showed him a better seal. But that was that. This was reality. A reality she has learned to embrace. For the sake of her son, and her own well-being. Minutes later. Mother, I don't want these pants. Naruto said strongly, glaring at the red short pants his mother was trying to make him wear. He'd come to, to realize that if he doesn't start saying no, his mother was going to make him wear a dress one day, just to embarrass him. But, Naru-chan, they will look good on you. Don't you want to match the color of your pants with your mother's hair? Kashina said, holding out a pair of red shorts. She really thought they'd look good on him, but her son didn't agree with her sentiments. Your hair is beautiful mother. I would have even preferred it if I was born with red hair like yours, but I will not wear those pants. Kashina sighed, fine, but you know they don't have your size at Asargis, she said. Regaining his composure, Naruto spoke, we can always order, he said. Ordering clothes would cost more, but she was willing to do anything for her son. I got you something, Kashina said, bringing out a red scarf, do you like it? Naruto beamed up, yes mother, he said. He took the crimson cloth and washed it over his face before speaking once more, it's not soft as your hair, but still wonderful. He then grabbed his mother's hand, dragging her to the counter so that she could pay. Hold up, Naru-chan, Kashina said. Don't you want anything else? The blonde shook his head, no. He seems happy today, Takada, the shop owner said, looking down at the smiling blonde. He should be, his mother just got him something nice, Kashina said, handing out the money for the piece of cloth. 
This was just one of the two clothing shops the two could buy clothes without being overpriced or getting a disturbing glare from the shop owner. This man, Takada, was really nice towards them. Perhaps it was because he has known Kashina for a long time as she has been buying her clothes from this shop from her younger days. This was one of the stores that sold, Uzumaki. Come back again when you want something, Takata said, as mother and son walked away from the counter, having purchased their item. Lost in thought, Naruto bumped into someone at the door, causing him to fall back. The man he'd hit, middle-aged, short black hair, fair skin, civilian clothing, glared down at the blonde. Watch where you're going vermin. He snarled as the blonde got up. The temperature went cold drastically, excuse me? Kashina started, a murderous aura surrounding her. What did you just call my son? I dare you to repeat it. The woman looked more of a demon than a beautiful and sweet Uzumaki woman she was. The culprit smiled nervously, heart racing. It was certain that if he answered incorrectly, he would not see the light again. Honestly, between the blonde and the woman, the mother was the real demon. He was saved when Naruto grabbed his mother's right hand. Mother, leave it be. This filth is not worth your wrath, Naruto said, the cheery demeanor all but a memory. Besides, you shouldn't dirty your hands by touching such a despicable monkey. The fear of was quickly replaced by anger in the man when he heard Naruto speak, what did you just? Naruto turned his face, gave the man a very, very nasty look that was enough to make him trip while moving back unconsciously. Once more smiling, Naruto faced his mother to calm her down. Come mother, I want to show you the progress I made with the seal you taught me. Naruto didn't give his mother a chance to cast one last threatening glare because he started dragging her away. Slow down, Naruto, Kashina said. Sorry, Naruto apologized. Kashina shrugged it off. I'm surprised that you're making good progress with your fuenjutsu. Well, this confirms one thing, you're truly my son. Naruto smiled. How soothing it felt just to hear his mother say those words. Fuenjutsu was an art that his mother did better than anyone in the village. Minato may have been hailed as a master, but many of the seals he knew were taught to him by Kashina Uzumaki. Naruto wanted nothing more than to make his mother proud by excelling in whatever she taught. He swore to even to do it better than that man. Two days later, this was the house she once shared with Minato, her beloved yellow flash, but now he was no more. He disappeared along with the cold breeze that washed over Konoha seven years ago. No matter what, this was hers and Naruto's home, their house, just the two of them. The Uchiha compound offered them some security and comfort, and it was fun hanging out with the main family, Fugaku's family. Well, it was fun for her at least. She always had Makoto to cheer her up. Both were retired Junin who now took care of their families. It was a different matter for Naruto though. Her son got along with Itachi and Makoto, but when it came to Sasuke, it was another matter and she hasn't figured out his relationship with the Uchiha clan leader. Kashina smiled looking at her son. They were sitting beside the dining table, having their family dinner. This was their home. This was everything that Minato had left them. The burden was outside, sometimes unbearable, sometimes she got bloody urges to kill people, but this right here made up for all for it. A quiet family time with her son, seeing much more of his beautiful smile. Something wrong, mother? Naruto asked seeing the look his mother was giving him instead of stuffing down her meal. Kashina shook her head before going back to her meal. Silence settled in as mother and son ate their dinner, both deep inside their thoughts. Naruto broke the silence, Itachi wants to take me as his apprentice as that would pass my presence in the Anbu. Kashina frowned slightly, he wants you to join, Anbu? Naruto gave a nod, but I turned that down. He pointed out that following him will represent a good opportunity for me to learn. I don't have to necessarily join Anbu. I would rather you join the academy, Kashina said. Naruto simply nodded, and that meant one thing. He was going to tell Itachi that he couldn't do it. But he wasn't looking forward to joining the academy either. He had seen Kakashi pathetically fail many academy graduates, and he knew that they didn't graduate as real shinobi but mere hopefuls. Once dinner was done, Kashina took their plates and went to the sink to wash with Naruto following behind. While the mother washed, the son placed the plates in the cupboard. Have you considered making friends your age, Naruto? Naruto shook his head. His response didn't take a second to follow. No, he said. The only friend I need is you. Not that it wasn't pleasing to hear her son say that. Kashina still shook her head. 
You need to make friends Naruto, friends your own age. I thought you get along with Sasuke, but that went down the drain when he became jealous of your relationship with Itachi. Naruto looked at his mother curious, why is making friends that important? I have you, and that is that matters. Kashina didn't want to force Naruto to do anything he didn't want to, but at things stand, she would have to do so for his own good. Even I had friends, Naruto, and I do have a friend now. A friend is someone you laugh with, someone to can depend on, someone like Sasuke's mother. But I do with you, Naruto pointed out, making Kashina sigh. This would have to do another day, it has been a long day and she needed to rest. Once they finished doing the dishes, they went towards the living room, but didn't stay there for too long. Do you want me to read you a bedtime story? I'm too old for that, Naruto said. You're just my baby boy, Naru-chan, Kashina said, knowing that it would only make Naruto frown. While he enjoyed being showered with affection by his mother, he also liked for her to see him as a grown-up, despite being just seven-year-old. Kids these days, let's get you bed, shall we? Naruto nodded with a small smile allowing his mother to take him towards his room. It was a neat room that had a small bed pressed against the wall opposite to the door, a drawer on the left side of the bed. Kashina watched quietly as Naruto got into bed. Once he settled, she sat down on the edge, held her hands together between her thighs. She didn't like showing Naruto a sad smile, but this place always brought it out. I'd imagined that your father would be here, with me when tucking you to bed, Kashina said quietly. While I was still carrying you, I thought we were going to have the perfect family. Just you, me and Minato Baka. All the more reasons to hate that cursed Uchiha who pulled out the Kayubi from his mother, forcing it to attack Konoha. If it hadn't been for that masked man, none of this would have happened. His mother would have been smiling, Konoha wouldn't be tormenting them. Perhaps he would have been given the chance to see that idiotic grin Kashina had said Minato would carry in some cases. But one man had changed fate, he had changed things for him. No, more like screwed it up. And for that reason, Naruto would be more than happy to mutilate the evil bastard who has caused his mother pain. I told Minato that you also needed a father, that I couldn't do it alone, but he said I could. I'd offered to reseal the Kayubi within me again, but he was thinking about the future. Two things Minato did and thought right. Sealing the Kayubi in him instead of his mother, and saying she could raise him well. He didn't care if he could be used as a sacrifice or turned into a guinea pig, as long as his mother wasn't put in any of that. Naruto Uzumaki would always know how to smile. His mother had also raised him well, so much better that he didn't have any complaints but to be thankful every day for being birthed by her. You have not failed as a mother. You have raised me well, and have taken good care of me. If they gave awards for best mothers, I would give you a crown of gold every sunrise for being the best mom, Naruto said with a smile. You're the best, and I couldn't have asked for a better mother than you. You are all I need. Kashina turned towards her son, offered him a warm smile, and I couldn't have asked for a better child than you. A sad smile replaced the warmth in her. I'm sorry you were forced to grow up so fast, Naruchan. I wish you had lots of friends, played with other kids in the park. Naruto closed his eyes. He may have grown so fast, but his mind still needed all the rest it deserved. You make up for everything, mother. Your smile is worth a lot of friends. Smiling once more, Kashina rose up. Thank you, Naruto, she said, leaning down before placing a soft kiss on Naruto's forehead. Good night, Sochi. Sleep well, Okawa-san. Midnight. As always in situations like this, more precisely, when his gut felt the spiritual waves sending him a message that something was wrong with his mother, Naruto has always woken up without a second pause to confirm whether the gut feeling was right or not. When it concerned his mother, Naruto didn't need to confirm anything. All that was needed for him was to be a good son to his mother and nothing else. The night sounds didn't bother Naruto for a moment as he walked through the lightless passages of the home he shares with his mother. The world could turn into a lake of lava, but he wouldn't even spare it a glance while his gut grumbled something about his mother. Naruto reached his mother's room and gently opened the door. The room was dark but his eyes could make the image of his mother quite perfectly. The soft yet sad sound of her melodious voice crying reached his ears, and Naruto only knew one thing. Comfort mother. Situations like this have occurred in the past and it happened on about two or three nights in a year. He knew of it from age four, and that was when he had stopped crying. His mother was crying, he didn't need to add more to it. 
Her tears were more than enough for two of them. Ever since he made a promise to never cry again, Naruto has never shed a single tear. Naruto walked over to his mother's bed. She had a picture of her and Minato, smiling like a couple of idiots, pressed against her chest. There were so many instances where Naruto thought of burning down every memory of Minato in this house, but he couldn't do it. Still, the fact that his mother was crying, because one man had died, brought out the worst feelings in him, and made him remember the negative feeling he first held. Before Naruto hated Konoha, he hated Minato for leaving his mother. Kashina Uzumaki would not be crying if that man had still been alive, but she was crying because he had chosen to die to save thousands of ungrateful monkeys. The one person he hated enough that he'd vowed to kill is the masked man who extracted the Kayubi from his beloved mother. If it hadn't been him, Minato would have been here and his mother wouldn't be crying. Naruto cleared his thoughts before taking the picture frame from his mother. Once done, he threw it away carelessly. He couldn't replace Minato, he couldn't. Still, he could offer something that dead man could not, comfort. No word was said as Naruto slipped into bed, allowed his mother to hold him like a pillow. Even though the hold was tight, he didn't complain, or make a sound. Everything in the name of making Kashina happy was accepted. He was willing to lose his fingers for his mother. As long as she was able to sleep better, he would always smile. The following morning, Naruto said his goodbye to his mother before heading out. Kashina spent her daytime at the Yamanaka flower shop, while sometimes just hanging out with him at the park or with Makoto. The moments with his mother were a treasure to Naruto. He would certainly go on a killing spree if anyone soared to disturb those memories. Since he didn't go to the academy, he had plenty of time to gain new experiences with his mother. Soon as Naruto went outside, going by the backside of the house as it was the shortcut to the Uchiha compound, he was greeted by a lone man, happily harvesting in the garden he worked so hard with his mother to make. A more twisted look appeared on his face, complemented by a deep frown. You, people, truly are baboons. I expect to see such behavior from uncivilized monkeys, not people. You really go far to prove me right, Naruto said, eyes narrowed with deadly intentions. It was better to deal with this than allow his mother to bloody her hands once more again. The man, looking to be in his early thirties, with long black hair and black eyes, looked down at Naruto. He didn't move away from the plastic bag that was carrying the vegetables he was stealing. What did you just call me? Naruto ignored those words, instead, he chose to focus on his own dialogue. I better deal with this before mother comes out, he said, taking out a kunai from his pocket while walking towards the man. Are you ignoring me, vermin? That audacity of trash to ignore him while he talked. Before anything could be said, an anbu appeared in a flash. He apprehended the intruder before looking at Naruto, I will take him to Anko, he said monotonously. I dislike being tempted like this, Naruto simply said, knowing full well that the Anbu had first watched what he would do before moving on to defuse the situation. The Anbu merely nodded before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. With the obstacle gone, Naruto gave one last look to the house and pocketed the kanai he always held before heading towards his destination. Uchiha Compound The walk within the Uchiha Compound was always pleasant. Naruto had no feelings of being alienated as he walked through the place. Their mutual feeling from Konoha helped in understanding each other, and made things better for them. While walking through the compound, there was no fear of someone jumping on him to attempt something stupid, there were no hateful glares that tried to peek inside his mind. Naruto-kun, Makoto said, smiling at the blonde who was outside of her house. Please come in. Despite the fact that he was overly familiar with this house, he always knocked each time he came here alone. Thank you, Naruto said. Surprise me, Makoto said, hands folded across her chest. Naruto gave a barely visible smile, that Makoto was able to catch, he shook his head, no surprises Makoto, he said. Perhaps one of these days I will surprise you, but not today. That better come soon, I'm losing money to Itachi, Makoto said. Is your mother still at home? She should be, Naruto said. Makoto smiled, Itachi will be down in a few moments. He's still getting Sasuke-kun for the academy, that said, the former Junin disappeared to another room. Not a second after she disappeared, she peeked through the door from the living room, go up to Itachi's room if you don't want to wait. Minutes later, the moment Sasuke saw Naruto, he had requested that Itachi accompany him to the academy. Judging by how Makoto looked, 
it was obvious that she had said she would walk him. Along the way, the younger Uchiha had walked in all of Itachi's sides, just to ensure that Naruto wasn't close. Obviously, he wanted to monopolize his brother's affection. A pity Naruto didn't seem interested in joining on with the competition. After Sasuke had walked into the academy grounds, Itachi and Naruto disappeared off to the Hokage Monument. I cannot bear it anymore, Itachi. I can't continue to watch her like this. I know it only happens on a few occasions, but it doesn't make me happy. The worst feeling is that I can't I don't know how to stop it. My mother doesn't know about it, does she? Naruto shook his head, no. Tell her, only she can help in this situation. I'll speak to her first, Naruto said. In the meantime, let us step up with my training. I don't care if I have to return home unconscious every day. How far was one willing to go to protect the things they loved? For Naruto, there seemed to be no limit to what he could do or sacrifice to protect his mother. Itachi also has something he wants to protect, but was he willing to carry the burden? Naruto would without doubt. As it stood, he would be forced to test his limits. Just how far are you willing to protect your mother, Naruto? He already knew the answer, but he wanted Naruto to say, one more time, for his own conviction. There is no limit, no place that is far. No abyss I will not dive into. I will grow wings if it means protecting mother. A couple of days later. Kashina's house. It was just after noon, Kashina had returned from the flower shop, where she usually gathered herself to kill some time. Naruto was no longer the little brat that needed her eyes to be looming over his figure in all corners. He was no longer the jumpy boy he was when he had yet to utter a single meaningful word. While she was letting the cool breeze wash over her crimson hair, under the daylight of a Tuesday. She was relaxing behind her house, at her garden. The wind changed directions, going north. Her eyes traveled at the speed of light, heading straight at the back entrance of her house, Jiraiya. No word left her lips as she stared straight at the perverted white-haired Sanin. Hello, Kashina, Jiraiya greeted, his tone low, mixed emotions all over his face. Jiraiya, the tense silence settled in after Kashina's response. She wasn't by any means being hostile towards him, nor she was friendly, just neutral. Jiraiya coughed up a wry smile. You're never going to make this easy for me, are you? I'm not trying to make things difficult for you, Jiraiya. I'm quiet because I'm giving you the chance to make your story. Jiraiya suppressed a strong urge to frown. He didn't have any story to tell. He'd already told all his stories in the past couple of years. He was close to begging now, weeping while on his knees just so the woman could accept him in Naruto's life. Please Kashina, we can't go on like this. I'm truly sorry. If I could back in time to take a different path, I would. You know what Naruto would say about that? Well, maybe you should try making the impossible possible, Kashina said, a mild smile playing over her lips. The reason I even talked to you is because you were there when we needed you the most. Had you not been there that day, I wouldn't even speak to you. How could Jiraiya could about that regrettable day? It was forever engraved inside his spirit and mind. The day the Sandame announced Naruto Uzumaki as the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, that had been hell itself. He had never been so disgusted by Konoha's people. He had never questioned his loyalties to the village, but that day, he questioned himself. When the third announced Naruto as the hero that Yandaimi made him, Konoha had rioted. They'd acted like a pack of hungry wolves, and nearly burned down the village. It was that day that Konoha stood still. Konoha wanted nothing but to burn down Naruto. Kashina was in the hospital, unconscious due to the loss of energy induced to her by the extraction of the Kayubi. Jiraiya had never seen his sensei downright pissed, but that day, he had seen Serutobi wear the mask of a god, walking around the village with Naruto in his hands, an aura of death oozing around him. He had dared anyone to attempt anything, dared anyone to touch Naruto. Of course he didn't allow his old sensei to outshine him. He had worn the gown of a sanin and walked beside his sensei. A couple of civilians were executed after they were found trying to break into the house in the days that followed. After troubled ceased, Kashina released, Jiraiya had disappeared once more. Kashina stood up and offered Jiraiya a weak smile, I think you would be a good influence on my Naruto. This is why I didn't refuse when you had him sign the contract with the Toads. However, that will depend on Naruto. If he doesn't want you, I won't force him. Meanwhile, back and forth it, back and forth it went. 
The cool wind kept blowing by his face as the swing took him forth and back. For Naruto, there was no enjoyment to take from the swing, no joy at all. The fact that he was swinging alone was just a symbol of how pathetic his life was when his mother wasn't around. If she had been here, she would have been behind him, pushing him. A whole new world seemed to envelope the depths of his soul when he was separated from his mother, but Naruto didn't mind, not at all. The only person who deserved to see the true might of his smile and happiness was his mother. Bored? No, he wasn't bored. Not the least. While the lonely swing did its round, on his right hand was a Fuinjutsu book that he was reading. The ceiling art formed a part of his core, it was his mother's pride and joy and so it would be his. Because he doesn't go to the academy, he had to learn to study on his own. Often his mother helped him when they were at home, and with Fuinjutsu she was the one who taught him, and was still teaching him. As he would like to affectionately call her, she was the wizard of Fuinjutsu. He missed nothing of the things they taught at the academy because all the books were available to him. Thanks to one of the few things Minato did, he didn't leave them broke and without treasure. The man had left a library that was worthy of a cage and Naruto wasn't afraid to make full use of it. He could even proudly say the library alone taught him more than enough, and much more valuable than the weak things they taught at the worthless ninja academy. The thought of that crap really did put a frown on his face. There was no good done there, nothing at all. The only children who came out of the academy ready to be ninjas were clan children. The clans had enough resources and power to hire tutors to teach their children at their compounds, from clan techniques to everything they needed to know about the shinobi world. The academy didn't even teach the students what the shinobi world was like, it was truly unfortunate that they had to blindside the kids. Oh, well, it didn't concern him. It shouldn't. He was content with burying himself within his father's library and attaining all the knowledge he could while Itachi, Kakashi and the Sandane gave him private lessons. Back and forth it went, as Naruto flipped a page on his book. He was trying to ignore everything that was around him. A bunch of kids making noise around the park. He hadn't come here because he wanted to. His mother had made him come with that devilish blonde Yamanaka girl. You can't let a girl go to that place alone, Naru-chan. Who's gonna protect her from bullies? His mother has so said with a wide smile. Definitely playing a trick on him. But it worked, not because he had the interest in protecting the girl, but because his mother had said so. Speaking of the blonde, ah, oh, there she was picking up troubling again. Hey, leave her alone and pick on someone your own size. Eno shouted, glaring at the three bullies who were busy bullying a pink-haired girl because of her rather large forehead. Who's our size, you? One of the boys said, grinning at the wonderful formed Yamanaka air. Well, no, but leave her alone. Eno was firm not wanting to see another girl being bullied by a worthless bunch of bullies who only picked on girls instead of fighting with other boys. Oh will you look at that, she wants to join in the fun, another of the boys said, turning his attention towards the Yamanaka. Naruto sighed, always picking up trouble. He ignored the whole thing as though it wasn't happening. He looked firmly at his book. Fuinjutsu was really a complex art that needed time and energy. You also needed a mind that was able to think out of the box, a bit crazy to be able to think explosive stuff. But since his mother taught him to read and write, he had been looking at Fuinjutsu, he could understand it well, and he knew he would surpass his mother one day. The art was embedded inside his mind more than anything else. Naruto. Ino called, her voice high, a bit of fear audible. Her fellow blonde ignored it though. Naruto. A little help here. Once more again, Naruto ignored her. That loser can't help you. Look at him. He's frozen down and can't stand. One of the boys said with a chuckle, staring down at the cornered Yamanaka girl. Ino tried to ignore the boy breathing down her neck, and glared at the side of Naruto. That bastard she thought angrily. Naruto Uzumaki, if you don't come here and help, I will tell that you just watched a girl being bullied. That seemed to catch Naruto's attention. He closed his book, placed it inside his pocket, and looked at the direction of the girl, but still didn't get up. What? His tone was low, but it was enough for Ino to assume what he had said. Are you just going to just watch two girls being bullied by these brutes? Ino shouted again. Hey, who are you calling a brute? Yes, Naruto simply said. He was dead serious and Ino knew it. If you don't come here, I will tell your mother and you know how disappointed she will be when she finds out what you did. It didn't take a second for Naruto to be at Ino's side. 
He ignored the boys and stood beside the boys who had cornered her, while the other two were just behind him, along with the pink-haired girl. I thought we had an agreement. Yes, but I had asked nicely and you didn't help. What other choice did I have? He had asked for it by refusing to help when she had asked nicely. If he wanted to do things the hard way, then she had no problems following his lead. The boy in front of Ino placed his right hand on Ino's mouth, stopping her from talking further. He then turned to Naruto, beat it trash, unless you want to join in the fun. Despite the position she found herself, Ino wasn't afraid, not when her black knight was standing before her. Naruto would make things okay, he would scare the boys away, he always did. For this reason, she had no reason to be afraid, no reason to struggle. Why was he called up into a situation like this? Normally, he would have preferred to just mind his own business. Ino could be bullied for all he cared. She was the one who was sticking her nose into things that didn't concern her. Who played hero when they didn't have the power? You certainly didn't enter a snake's burrow when you had no plans to counter its venom. He didn't like playing hero, not when his mother wasn't concerned. Another boy placed his right right on Naruto's shoulder, you still alive? He asked, mockingly, seeing that Naruto had yet to say a word. Naturally, he assumed the blonde was frozen in fear. Naruto's neck nearly snapped when he twisted his head to face the boy. The look on his face was anything but nice and indifferent. Ruthlessly cold look on his eyes had its fangs on the boy's throat, its poisonous venom sending cold chills down his spine. He quickly took off his hand from Naruto and wanted to do nothing but run away to his mother and say, Ka-san, you were right, he is a demon. But he didn't, he just took a step back. Come on guys, let us get out here. The boy didn't give a reason as to why, he just left, without even looking back. The other two quickly followed, not before giving their victims one last shove. Ino quickly recovered from the whole ordeal and went towards Sakura who was still on the ground, was that difficult? No, but I would rather you didn't do something like that again. Naruto said, already walking away. T thank you, Sakura wanted to say, but he had already made the distance. Ino gave the girl a smile, don't worry about it, he's just like that. Ignore him for now, come on, let us go play. Sakura's lips twisted into a weak smile, before nodding softly. Up she went and followed her new friend. Naruto walked towards a tree in the park, sat down while leaning against its trunk. Weak girls, he thought. Kashina Uzumaki had fought her bullies, either be boys a boy or shinobi, she had beat up anyone who attempted to bully her. His mother was strong, she didn't rely on anyone to fight for her. But these girls, they relied on someone else to protect them. With her big personality, why couldn't Ino fight off their bullies like his mother did? Yes, she could fight off some other girls, by mocking them at least, but when it came to stubborn fools, she always relied on him. The first time he had been forced to play hero was about two years ago. A certain Hayuga was close to having her eyes peeled out simply because they looked weird. Naruto would have just ignored it, and mind his own business. Why was he to help when the girl had no relations to him? But the girl's cry for help had been so pathetic that had even he pitied her, a rare thing. He hasn't shown anyone pity since then, that was a one-time thing. Still, his mother had been proud of him. She was so happy. Clearing over those thoughts, Naruto chose lay back, his fuinjutsu book over his face. No one would dare come here to, to disturb him and he would murder anyone who would take the book his beloved mother gave him. That in mind, Naruto decided to nap while Ino wore herself out with her new friend. Boo, Kashina said, shaking her son furiously. Unfortunately for her, Naruto didn't freak out. Mother, he said, removing the book on his face. He could never mistake his mother's presence or her touch. There was no one who touched him like her. Even if his sense of touch was to leave him, he would still recognize his mother. Ah, oh, you're no fun anymore, Kashina said. Well, will you look at that? Mama's boy is smiling in the sight of his beloved mother, Ino said. A grin that spoke volumes about the thoughts going inside her head. Naruto looked at the girl with a frown, then looked at his mother, why mother? Kashina merely smiled, I don't know, Naru-chan, she said. But I know that your mother loves you. For Ino, this was just gold. Naruto's nickname, the blush that was threatening to paint his cheeks. Ino, Naruto coughed up a bit, straightening himself. A word to anyone about this and I will make you regret it. Play nice, Naruto, Kashina said as the boy took her right hand, already dragging her away. 
Come on Eno, she called the blonde girl who was being left behind. Sarutobi compound. Naruto-kun. Why do you wish to learn wind jutsus at such a young age? The Sandame Hokage asked, looking straight at the blonde, who was lying on the ground at the training area within his clan's compound. He usually took some time to teach the boy a few things when he could. He was surprised when Naruto suddenly asked to be trained in using wind jutsus. He hadn't expected the blonde to demand to armor himself with everything he could hold at this stage. Yes, he did understand that the blonde's desire to protect his mother was greater than anything, but at this stage, he wished for Naruto to live a bit more normally, despite the circumstances that surrounded him. He believed that it was not impossible for Naruto to gain friends and live a happy childhood. It was possible. Naruto just wasn't sold on the idea of exploring the possibilities. Perhaps he should have barred young Itachi from showing Naruto his chakra nature. He'd allowed it to happen because he believed it would quiet the blonde a bit, but that turned out to have the opposite effect. The blonde's chakra coils had developed far earlier than most children. It perhaps had to do with his Jinchuriki status, and as the blonde was willing to train, it wasn't wrong to teach him about chakra. I want to be strong, Gigi, Naruto said, staring at the clear sky. He had to be strong for his mother. Here is inside, looking at Naruto. Sometimes the blonde did wear him out. Yes, I know that. Wind manipulation isn't the easiest thing you can do at your age Naruto. Learning to control wind chakra takes years of training and hard work. He could remember his own days, staring at a waterfall while trying to cut it. It didn't actually take years to learn the manipulation of wind chakra. It depended on the capacity of the executor's mind to learn. Controlling pure wind was the most difficult. Then isn't it only right that I start now if it takes so many years to learn? If I start now, by the time I reach a more mature age, I will be able to manipulate the element, Naruto reasoned with the third. He shouldn't have said that, but he did know how to handle this child. Yes, that would be the most reasonable option, he said, not wanting to deny a straight up fact. However, that is the kind of thing that Root and Bu learn at your age, and I don't want to treat you in the same manner. I don't want you to have the same mentality as Root Anbu and endure the same harsh training Danzo gives them. I really appreciate that, Gigi, Naruto said quietly. You have really treated me well over the years. I don't think I can even imagine you teaching me how to become an emotionless robot like Danzo does with his Root. A rare small smile appeared on his face when those words left his mouth. He could always count on the Sandame to treat him well aside from his mother. This is what it meant being the son of a former Hokage. Privileged to know more about the inner workings of the village. Minato had lots of things inside his office, secrets and everything. All of which were not hidden from him by his mother. She didn't seem to mind him making himself comfortable in his father's study, even when she knew he was reading some things he shouldn't. She just didn't allow him anywhere near those kind of S-rank secrets. What Danzo was and did wasn't something that could be classified as S-rank. The third chuckled lightly, well, I wouldn't be living with the wool of fire in me if I went to the extreme. Besides, Kashina-chan would kill me. Naruto smiled, yes, yes, she would, he said. Mother can be overprotective sometimes, not that he was complaining about it. He wouldn't have it any other way. Aren't you like her in that regard, Naruto-kun? The Hokage asked, slightly amused by the thought of how both mother and son were overprotective of each other. Even so, the fact that Naruto never seemed to notice that he was overprotective of his mother. Well, he was still just a seven-year-old, regardless of how smart he was. Maybe, Naruto said with a shrug, he was never going to openly admit it, nor was his mother. To him, it was only, right, that he think of his mother's safety all the time. Back onto the matter at hand, I think it is necessary for me to learn all that I can when looking at the environment that surrounds me. I do not disagree with your assessment but you should mind your age as well. Other children your age aren't concerned about their mothers in the way you do. That doesn't mean they don't care, it only means they know their role is to be children and allow their parents to protect them. Naruto got up from the ground, he had recovered enough energy from the taijutsu training the Sandame was teaching him. He couldn't learn taijutsu from Itachi because the Anbu captain's style went along with his Sharingan. He didn't have those eyes, so the style wouldn't suit him. The blonde sat carefully, legs crossed and looked at the third, who was sitting just away from him. I feel you are saying that I'm acting like an adult, instead of being a child. But you forget that the father is always the head, 
I don't have that. The third shook his head slightly, I can never forget that you don't have that, Naruto-kun, but your mother isn't a civilian. She is a retired Jonin. Don't you always brag about her superior knowledge with seals whenever you get the chance? Even the saying of those words by someone was enough to make him smile. Still, I do what I must for mother, he could only say. If father was here, then the story would be different. Admittedly, the Sandame Hokage acknowledged with a sad frown. It is unfortunate that Minato passed away at such a young age. He could have been doing a better job than I am. Maybe, or maybe not, Naruto said. Possibilities are always there. You have your experience to count on. Your physical prowess may be deteriorating, but your mind hasn't. So, it is still arguable. Nevertheless, it is indeed cruel that he pathetically died. He didn't pathetically die, Naruto, the Sandame said firmly. No matter how many times he had to repeat it for Naruto to get it through his head, the Sandame would always have the strength to say it. Minato-kun died a noble death. Like I always say, in yours and the villager's perspective. That recorded answer once more, but the Sandame wasn't worried. He knew Naruto's weakness and he would eventually expose it. Have you ever questioned yourself about what you would do in his position? I know if someone threatened your mother you would do anything possible to save her. Minato did what he believed was best to save his family and the village he had sworn to protect no matter the cost, no matter the pain. There are ways he could have gone about that, and still be alive. Giving away his life wasn't a necessity. The fact that Naruto didn't actually hate his father for sealing the Kayubi in him was a relief for Hiruzen and the fact that a part of him understood that he had to protect his village. What Naruto resented from Minato was that he died. There wasn't anything else that Naruto resented about his father. The fact that he died instead of living, hurt the blonde more than he was willing to admit. Naruto wanted his father to be there to protect him and his mother. He wanted his father to stand up for his family. What made matters worse was that the very people Minato had died protecting hated him, his father's son. The people had been quick to disregard Minato's wishes in favor of their hatred. Naruto hated that, he resented his father for being too trusting. If the people had accepted him as a hero and didn't make him and his mother's life a misery, there wouldn't be any resentment on Naruto's side. None at all, your mother told you didn't she? The seal Minato-kun used allows for you to use the Kayubi's chakra. The seals that held the biju in your mother and Mito-sama were meant to, to hold it back. What if your father believed that the Uchiha would return once again to Konoha? The fact that the Uchiha is still alive means that your father failed to kill him. What if he thought the best way to protect his family and Konoha was to give you the Kayubi's power? Wouldn't that explain why he chose you and that seal specifically, despite your mother's arguments? Naruto clenched his fists, I have thought of that possibility, he said. Obviously the answer didn't please him given the clenched fists. But nothing can take away from what I have been forced to experience because of his decision. The third smiled sadly. Minato's only fault was that he trusted the villagers to see you as a hero. A part of me thought they would. Which is why I honored his wish to tell the people of your status, he said. Nevertheless, I still do believe that your father trusted you, his own son to protect his wife and this village against an enemy he knew he couldn't defeat. His hopes may have been crushed, but I honestly believe he gave you that power to protect what he held dear. That is why he chose to die while you live. This is why I give my time to teach you, so that Minato's other wish comes true. Naruto's response was to frown while his mother complex wrestled with reason. The third knew it. This is why even though his anbu had marked Naruto as a flight risk, he still believed that Naruto would change. His mother complex stopped him from adhering to any reasonable conclusion he came up with. If the complex was crushed, Naruto would understand things. But for now, he could hope. No matter how smart he may be, he was still a seven-year-old child. Your mother must believe your father trusted you to carry out his wish as well, using his mother broke all arguments. One would think he was manipulating the boy by using his mother, but this was just the truth and he wanted. No, he needed Naruto to understand clearly. I believe this is why she still lives in this village and possibly told you about the seal so that you can understand. Tell me Naruto-kun, do you think your mother resents him? No, Naruto grunted. If anything, she missed him. Perhaps that was another part of the reason he resented his father. I will still train you regardless, the Sandame said. However, if you're going to learn wind manipulation, 
you're going to have to allow your chakra coils to mature and learn to control your chakra. My reserves are nothing compared to when I was in my prime, but I make up for it by using the minimum chakra required for a jutsu. This is all thanks to my excellent chakra control. Kakashi has said that despite my age, I do possess large amounts of chakra. At this age it can be controllable, however, if it continues to grow as it has been, it'll become hard for me to control it as you do with yours. He may be right, but should you learn extensive chakra control at this age, you should be able to control it well as it grows. The problem becomes when you attempt to control chakra that is out of control, the Sandame Hokage said. Naruto nodded, I assumed it may be so, he said. One more thing you'll have to do to continue receiving training from me, the third said. Naruto had a feeling he knew what the third was going to say. He even dreaded the answer as he asked, what? Go to the academy. I will handle all your paperwork. Yup. This is what he definitely suspected. I don't want to, he whined like the seven year he was. Has your mother spoken to you about the academy? Yes, she has. And what did she say? She said she wanted me to join the academy and make friends, Naruto said. The Sandane smiled. Do you want to make your mother happy, Naruto-kun? Of course, do you even need to ask? The response came out of the blonde's mouth without even a moment of pause and some firmness. There was no doubt he wanted to make Uzumaki Kashina a happy mother. Join the academy and make friends, Naruto-kun. Naruto's response was to frown. You've seen it haven't you? When Sasuke-kun comes back from the academy and tells his mother how well he did, she always smiles at him. Sometimes she even walks him there. If you think I'm pulling one over you, go ask your mother. The third added, I know you're not optimistic about making friends, but don't lose hope in the young ones as well. Naruto's frown just deepened, I'll speak to her, he said. Good, the third said. Well, today he did a lot of groundwork. This was worthy of a treat at the ramen stand. But first thing first, Naruto-kun, we'll have to go to Suna in two days. No, it wasn't anything the third Hokage hadn't expected from the blonde. Come on my boy, don't you want to see Tamari-chan? Once more again, Naruto just frowned. It was a year ago when his mother told him that there was some signed agreement between Konoha and Suna, his mother had participated in it as well. The agreement was that he was to marry the Yandaimi Case Cage's daughter when he turned 18. The agreement had been struck when the Sandame was contemplating allowing him and his mother to take refuge in Suna until things cooled down in the village. He had yet to even reach one year of age when his mother and the Sandame found him a fiancé. The Sandane's reasons were to strengthen Suna's ties with Konoha. The village doesn't have a lot of allies, despite the village being the strongest in the elemental nations. His mother also feared that since he was hated, he was likely to grow without a girlfriend. So she found the perfect girl. A girl who has a Jinchuriki for a brother. A potential friend, possibly. Last time you went without complaints. Mother was going, Naruto said with a shrug. Well, I didn't say she wasn't going this time now did I? Oh, the sand dame chuckled. He did that on purpose. Definitely. Come on, let us go get ramen before my clone runs out of chakra. 4x. The sand dame couldn't be more ashamed of the village he led as he walked through the streets of Konoha with his beloved grandson. The looks they were giving the boy were not pleasant at all. It just downright disgusted him. Minato would be ashamed if he saw how these people treated his own son. The devil even sneaked into his thoughts, putting questions like, if Minato could be given a second chance, would he still follow the same path even if he knew that Konoha would once again treat his son this badly? There were so many times that he'd wished that Minato had allowed him to be the one to sacrifice his soul to the Shinigami for the ceiling for the Kayubi. He had lost his wife that night, and his sons had all grown up. Nobody needed him anymore. As long as Minato had been here, everything would have been okay. He had mentored the young Hokage enough when he first took the post, so he could have handled things well in the aftermath of everything. Perhaps that sacrifice would have made up for all the wrongs he did in his long life. Still, he was here and a young man who had a bright future was dead. Gone along with the creepy wind of October 10th seven years ago. How could these people smile at him and greet him respectfully while simultaneously sending death glares at the poor boy? At least not everyone was that bad, even amongst the civilians. But the majority were bad. Regardless, his ways couldn't let him lose hope in this people ever changing. He believed they would eventually change. 
Naruto just had to do something good for them to see that they'd been wrong about him. The past wouldn't be erased even if they do change though. Still, there was a big question on whether they would change or not. This is rather unpleasant, isn't it? The third Hokage admitted rather bitterly while looking at the blonde walking on his right side. Unpleasant? Naruto seemed to ponder on it for a few moments before he shrugged. Unpleasant it is, for lack of a better word. I've become used to it nonetheless. The first years were difficult. But like the heat in Suna, once you live there long enough, you grow accustomed to it that it becomes natural. Not to say that this feels natural by any means. I get what you're saying, Sarutobi said, keeping the mild taste in his tongue. Do you think they'll ever change, Naruto-kun? I stopped asking myself that question when I was five, Gigi, Naruto said. The professor let out a bitter chuckle before he responded, those years were truly bad. At least things have bettered a bit in recent years, he added, do you think it would have been much easier for you if the deal to have you live at Sanagakure with your mother had gone through? Keeping in mind, it would only be temporary. Maybe or maybe not. Logic dictates that it would have been pleasant as those people don't know my Jinchuriki status. But that is that and this is the reality. Dwelling on what could have been doesn't help with anything. Such thoughts plagued my mind in abundance. How would things be like if father was alive? Would they hate me? Would I be running around the village with a smile? Those kind of thoughts did nothing but dish out the misery in a large bowl. The reality of things is that my father is dead, and I resent him for it. Konoha hates me, and I must learn to live with all that. A frown threatened to break free on the Sandame's face, but he suppressed it. We can only hope, that is for you. I have nothing to hope for, Naruto said. When are you going to retire anyway? You're going to be a real grandfather soon enough. Don't remind me, the third said. I won't retire until you grow old enough for me to say you are strong enough, the sand dame added, ruffling up the boy's hair affectionately. Naruto let out a tiny smile, small as it was, it was there, the third noted it with great care. I wouldn't have it any other way Gigi. Later, the sand dame Hokage has always been a pervert. Always, even when Jiraiya was just a brat, he had been a pervert. However, he has always hid his perverseness from other people because it would be embarrassing. If it wasn't because of the repercussions in waiting, he would even indulge in the peaking his former student does, while well, he had his crystal ball. That was his secret though. What would people say if they heard that, the professor, god of shinobi, the sandame hokage and konoha's long-serving cage, was a shameless pervert who giggled in the confines of his office while watching young girls splash water at each other in the hot springs, through his magic ball? When this woman walked into the office, a warm smile painted across her face, lips colored in blue and long red hair that reached down the curvy waist, the sand dame couldn't help himself but stare. Dignity be damned, this woman's beauty begged for his perverted side to look at her in wonder and in all indecent forms he could compute. Ahem, Jiraiya cleared his throat before his sensei started drooling. It was enough that he'd hit on the woman before, now for his sensei to drool over her would be just embarrassing. Nevertheless, it would confirm something, the woman was a beauty. If his sensei could see it, then he had not been wrong. Sensei, not in front of your own student. You're embarrassing me, the toad sage said, a smirk on his face. What was wrong with these men? Mei thought looking at the third and his former student. The toad sage was already infamous with some women with his books, but she didn't have a problem with them. The third was supposed to be a dignified old man of peace with an image to uphold. But upon her entrance to his office, it had crumbled down and now he was trying to pick up the pieces. The third Hokage looked at Jiraiya with a slight glare. Don't act like a child Jiraiya-kun. He stated before looking back at Mei with a small smile, please take a seat. Thank you, Hokage-sama, Mei said. And thanks for taking your time to see me. I wasn't sure you'd be willing to talk to me. Don't worry about it, the third said smiling. Turumi Mei, leader of the rebel faction in Kiri's civil war. That is about right, Jiraiya-kun, the Sanin's intel was always reliable. He was just asking for the sake of it. Yes, Jiraiya said with a nod. Mei wasn't surprised. Kiri may be in lockdown because of the war, but some shinobi were truly capable of making the impossible possible. Forgive me, but I'm going to be blunt. Granted you already know who I am. I can safely say you know what it is that I came here for. The Sandame nodded. You don't mind if I smoke, do you? He was already lighting up his pipe when he asked. Mei was tempted to say she does mind, but held it back. 
You require, Konoha's assistance in the civil war that has crippled Kiri's resources. Mei nodded. Why Konoha, exactly? Jiraiya asked. The Yandaimi Rakage wouldn't agree to it without making some outrageous demands. Suna isn't in a position to help. And well Iwagakir would rather colonize Kiri than help us. Konohagakir boasts the finest shinobi and is the strongest of the Great Five. Aside from that, the Sandame has been a long preacher of peace. So because I preach peace you believe I am the easiest to recruit to assist you and wouldn't even make an outrageous demand like other nations, huh? The Sandame said, puffing out some smoke. It sounded a bit bad when he put it like that. I don't mean it like that exactly, May tried to explain herself. The Sandame merely chuckled, waving her off. I understand what you mean, he said before he put away his pipe. His expression turned serious as he leaned against his chair. Speak, he said. May knew what the old man was saying and this was the hardest part. Honestly, I have nothing to offer as it stands. We have been making progress against Yagura's forces, but our enemy remains the Mazukinj. Meaning he controlled most things. However, I do believe that we will win the war. We just need some reinforcements for the final battle. When we win, we'll take over Kiri and start rebuilding it. Then, we can compensate you. You'll also gain an ally who'll never betray you. So basically you have nothing but promises without any evidence of it ever being ever fulfilled. This is the shinobi world. Signed treaties are nothing more than just pieces of papers. What value do mere words hold, if one can even deny ever saying them? The Sandame asked. May frowned. She hadn't expected the old man to jump into the opportunity to assist her, but she thought he would do a bit easy, given his reputation. I know but I'm willing to go through a blood oath to prove that I will come through to my promise. The Sandame just stared at May for a couple of moments. The woman couldn't even begin to guess what it was that was going inside his head. His mask was unreadable. How desperate are you? Excuse me? You came here with nothing but words, yet still expect me to risk the lives of my shinobi to help you. I just believe that there are still some good people in this world. It may be corrupted to the core, but a part of me believes that not everyone is bad. Do you think I'm wrong to have such hopes, Hokage-sama? That Sandame smiled as he spoke, not at all, he said. His serious mask returned. Tell me about the current Mizukage? What is wrong with him? I know this may sound as an accusation to the Uchiha clan, but we believe without a doubt that Yagura is being manipulated by a powerful Genjutsu, one that can only be cast by the Sharingan, May said. I see, the third said. It may not look like it but this piece of information was truly important to him. How did you come up with that conclusion, May san I'm afraid I can't tell you that. She couldn't tell them that one of her men had one of Konoha's coveted dujutsu. Can't or don't want to? This man wasn't making it easy for her. Well, they didn't call him the professor for nothing. It is a secret that we hold in our ranks. I'm sure you have things in your own ranks that you'd like to keep hidden. Yes, but when I'm trying to get someone to help me, without anything to offer, I divulge whatever I can, the Sandame said. Jiraiya just settled for watching his sensei work. The old man was really good with this kind of things. It appears that I was wrong coming here. With how this is going, it doesn't seem like I will get any help since I have nothing to offer. Who had she been kidding? No one gave anything for free, not in this cruel world of shinobi. There were always strings attached to every deal. Nothing was for free. That is how it seems, the Sandame said. May nodded, thank you for your time, she said ready to leave. But not how it is, the third said before adding. I never said I wouldn't offer my assistant. So, settle down. Tell me, what do you think would happen? Say if Onoki hears that I'm assisting you in the war and sends his own shinobi to assist Yagura? May frowned. Konoha and Iwa will end up fighting. Possibly reopen old war wounds. I don't need to tell you how badly that will affect us if we end up being dragged into war, having just recently recovered from the Kyubi's rampage seven years ago. May's frown deepened. If that happened, she wouldn't be able to help out in the ensuing war. I understand, she said. He was saying he really wants to help but the risks were far too great. Every leader had to think for his own people. The Sandame's responsibility wasn't to her people but to Konoha. I'm glad you understand, the Sandame said smiling. How long do you think this final battle will last? Mei was stunned, a week or two. You think you're up to the challenge, Jiraiya-kun? The Toad Sage nodded with a smile. I don't have any complaints as long as I get to stare at her mesmerizing beauty. The third chuckled slightly. Good, he said, you have yourself my assistance, Mei-san. 
Mei was still stunned. He was not only going to offer her his help, he was going to send his strongest shinobi? She would have been grateful if he just gave her some French shinobi. But Asanin? This was just a miracle. She couldn't help but smile and heap praise to her gut for telling her to come to this village. Thank you, Sandame Sama. I didn't expect this. Don't thank me yet, Saritobi said. Return to Konoha when you have ended Yagura's blood reign. That will be the first thing I do. I hope so, the third said. Would you rather rest or do you wish to leave now? My men can fetch the two you left outside the village. Mei showed no physical reaction to this revelation. The two she left were supposed to be hidden, but apparently the sand dame has great eyes. I have to return to camp right away. It will be dangerous if Yagura becomes aware of my absence. Understandable, the sand dame said. Jiraiya will catch up to you with the others before you reach C. Mei nodded and gave her thanks again before leaving. The sand dame didn't escort her out as it would raise suspicion and he wanted to get this done without too much noise about it. Once Mei was gone, Jiraiya looked at his sensei. You're not thinking of doing that, are you, sensei? The third merely smiled. Do you think this could be the same Uchiha as the one responsible for the Kayubi's attack? We still don't know if it is really the Sharingan that is manipulating Yagura. Yes, it will be best if Itachi Kun tags along. His Mangekyo Sharingan should be enough to discern that. If he gets something good, then we may take another step into unmasking this Uchiha. Jiraiya nodded in agreement. A few moments of silence settled in before the Toad Sage spoke once more. Sensei, his tone was low, you get along with the Gaki, does he hate me? The third sighed, you're going to have to speak to him eventually. If you're not going to break the ice, Naruto won't bother. Now, I raised you when you were just a brat, Jiraiya-kun. You have grown up now. You raised Minato well. This is something that I cannot help you with. However, I can tell you this. While on this secret mission, speak to Itachi-kun. He understands Naruto-kun. Two hours later, Danzo walked into the Sandame's office with a scowl on his face. He clearly didn't like being ordered by Hiruzen. Why did you call me, Hiruzen? Now now, Danzo, there is no need for such animosity. I did allow you to live after you attempted to get me killed, the third said before getting into the business at hand. I have a mission for your route. What? Danzo asked, with narrowed eyes. Kiri's civil war. You're to send your route Anbu to fight with the rebels against Yagura's forces. Send them tomorrow morning. I believe you already know the way. You have been keeping tabs on the situation, no? The following day. Just beside his favorite tree at the park, Ino sat, legs pressed across her chest. When this image registered in his mind, Naruto did nothing but frown as he walked up to her. He didn't want to be here in the first place. He was only here because her mother had asked him to fetch the girl as it was getting late and she wanted to close up the flower shop and return home. He would have said no, but his mother had been there, giving him that look that clearly told him to do what was requested of him or there would be consequences. The girl looked sad, and that was something he didn't want to deal with. He had his own problems. Sighing, Naruto sat down beside his fellow blonde. Just so you know, I don't care, he said before adding. I'm just going to ask because if I ignore you, my mother is going to find out and she won't be happy, or you may just use it against me. Always treat a girl well, Naru Chan, his mother always tells him. He knew she wouldn't smile at him and say you did well if he just ignored a child of a friend in this kind of situation, especially a girl. He didn't understand it, but sometimes his mother would just say he doesn't have to understand but do as he was told and he would eventually understand when he does grow up. He was all grown up at this stage, what was there to understand when he was advanced in age? You're cold, Eno said softly. But then again, sometimes she did appreciate his honesty. He didn't lie to her. He was always truthful. Even though he was only forced because of his mother's compulsion, he was still doing it and she thanked him for that. Naruto merely shrugged indifferently, what is wrong? Sakura, hmm, that pink-haired girl you saved a few weeks ago. She registered with the academy and is now in my class. Her father seems to have pulled some strings to get her in. That is not the problem though, we both like Sasuke-kun and decided to terminate our friendship to pursue him. And this makes you what was the right word, again? Sad? Ino nodded, yes. I liked our friendship but now we have become rivals, always throwing insults at each other. Sakura has also made new friends. Naruto sighed. His mother must truly hate him to make him go through such things. 
What are seven-year-olds doing chasing after Sasuke? What do you even mean you like him? You know, how a boy likes a girl, Ino tried explaining. No, I don't know, Naruto said. Ino sighed, yeah, you wouldn't. The only person Naruto likes is his mother, she said. So, you really like Sasuke, and this Sakura does as well. Both of you are fighting for his affection. He would really kill someone if he had to compete with them over his mother's affection. This has something to do with what adults call love, but you're just seven. You shouldn't be too worried about such things. It could hardly be called love between seven years olds, but he wasn't going to point that out. Says the guy who already has a fiancé. You're not supposed to talk about such things, Ino. Naruto said. How the girl had even got hold of it was beyond him. He wouldn't tell her such things and his mother wouldn't either. Perhaps she had walked into their mothers while they were talking about it. Sorry, does Sasuke share this, crush, of yours? Ino frowned slightly, but that was all the answer Naruto needed. My thoughts. Get over your stupid crush or destroy your friendship with that girl. What if by some great miracle, Itachi compels Sasuke to tell Sakura that he likes her better? Ino's frown deepened, it would take a miracle because Sasuke-kun likes me. Keeping telling yourself that, Naruto wanted to say, but the girl would probably tell his mother that he was mean to her. Come on, let's go, he stood and helped her up. Whether a solution was reached or not did not matter. Sanagakure. As soon as the sand dame, Kashina and Naruto made it to the gates of the village hidden in sand, they were greeted by a squad of Anbu. The third had his own Anbu as his guards, just hidden somewhere Naruto couldn't begin to sense. The way towards the village had been rather short as Hiruzen wanted to return to Konoha as quickly as he could. In his mind, he couldn't leave the village for too long when he had made enemies with that snake, Danzo. The Warhawk would probably choose to dethrone him in his absence. It was unlikely as he had made sure the root commander sent his root away to Kiri, but it was still a possibility. Hokage-sama, the leader of the Anbu squad said, walking over to the sand dame, Please allow us to take you straight to the case cage tower. Yandaimi Sama has instructed us to do so. The third smiled, would it be a problem if we walked? I wish to breathe in some fresh air before my meeting with the case cage. The journey has been a little long, I'm sure Naruto-kun would like to see the change in scenery once again. The Anbu didn't need to think about the matter to offer his response. He merely nodded, we will escort you then. The professor nodded. Would it be okay if my Anbu take a friendly round about the village? As long as they keep it friendly, there shouldn't be any problem, Hokage-sama. The third Hokage looked at his right. Naruto being held by his mother with her right hand. Let's go you too, he said. Is it just me is the weather different from when we were at in the desert? Kashina asked as they slowly walked through the streets of Suna, heading towards the case cage tower with the Anbu behind them. It is different, Sarutobi said. The heat isn't as bad as people make it seem. The journey across the desert isn't that bad itself, it is only bad during the windy seasons. Kashina nodded, she didn't need to be told that. She already knew that crossing the desert during the windy season was nothing more than to taunt death. She looked at her son, I'm so proud of you. You were able to make it to the village without having me to carry you across the desert. Your training is really paying off. Naruto smiled at his mother, thank you, he said. There was the fact that the last time he'd come to this village had been his first and, despite being told to prepare for what was ahead, he didn't think it would be so bad. But now he was able to move on his own and knew what to expect. Anything less would have been disappointing, the Sandame said, butting into the conversation. Naruto ought training from four different people, his mother included. Well, children of cages always received the best training they could get from their villages. Minato may be dead but he was Naruto's father and nothing would change that. Kashina nodded before smiling, all the better when we return home because he will be starting the academy, she said. Just the thought of her son, strong enough to protect himself against bullies, having some friends of his own, it really made her happy. Perhaps then her son could get the childhood he so deserved. It wasn't too late for him, he was just seven after all. Naruto wanted to frown, but he couldn't, not when his mother seemed happy. It was one of those moments that he had to suppress a sarcastic remark about his predicament. His mother was happy that he was going to the academy and may possibly make friends. He should be as well. He could well remember how his mother had picked him up grinning like a fool when he spoke to her about the academy. He'd never seen her so happy and relieved. 
It was one of those days she would be even willing to let him stay up all night watching TV, if he did that kind of thing. It really meant a lot to her, so he had to push on for her happiness. Don't worry too much about it, Naruto-kun, the Sandame said. I'll arrange that you be put into a class with the clan heirs. They are smart, Ino-chan is an example. Who knows, you may even get along with, with Sasuke-kun while competing for Academy Honors. I doubt it, Naruto said. If I become a competition, Sasuke is likely to see me as a threat. Kashina patted Naruto on the back. Where's your optimism, Naru-chan? She asked a bit loudly. What did I tell you? Never say never, Naruto recited those words his mother had beat into him until he could dream them. That's the spirit, Kashina said with a nod of her head. Looks like we've finally reached the tower, the Sandame said, looking at the case cage tower. The walk had been pleasant and a good way to kill some time. The leader of the Suna Anbu cleared his throat to catch the attention of the Hokage and those with him. Is he going to sit in as well? He asked, referring to Naruto. The third shook his head, no. Not this time, he said. I will take him to the case cage's home then, one of the Anbu said, to which Hiraza nodded. Kashina looked at her son. Do you still remember what I told you? Naruto nodded. And, what did I say again? Smile, Naruto said giving his mother a warm smile. Good, now go be a good boy and don't do anything that will give your mother a heart attack, Kashina said. Mother, what would I do that would give you a heart attack? Kashina shrugged. Well, you spend some time with him, she said her left shoulder pointing towards the Sandane. He's like Jiraiya, but he just does it in a closet. Who knows if he's read you that smut, the red-haired sent the Sandame a threatening glare, warning him. Now, now, Kashina-chan, I'm a responsible adult and wouldn't hope to dilute Naruto-kun's mind. Keep it that way, Kashina said. After Naruto was taken away, she returned to normal, come on, let us get this over with. I really hate formal meetings though. Case cage residents. Naruto had the decency to raise a brow when he saw Tamari. She wore a black kimono that fitted her perfectly. No lipsticks, just her pure face. The last time he'd come here, she looked normal. This time she looked as though she was preparing for a ceremonial festive. Good impressions? Maybe. Naruto smiled for two reasons. One, his mother. Two, both her and him were in a situation that none chose, and he could share some sympathy with her like he does with Itachi. Both he and the Uchiha shared a mindset. Protect what is important to their hearts no matter the cost. The only difference was that the precious things to their hearts were different. But both worked zealously for the love, and so they had something in common. Naruto, Tamari greeted the blonde with a somewhat forced smile. Tamari, Naruto said, you look nice, he added as the girl walked him towards the living room. His mother has always told him, always compliment a girl if you want to get in her good books. Thank you, Tamari said. She wanted to be polite and return the favor but the blonde didn't bother to be formal. He just looked normal. But then again, even his mother wore casual clothing the last time she was here. Like mother like son, so it appears. A thought clicked in her mind that forced her to change directions. You must be hungry from your journey. Food is prepared. How could she have forgotten that? Perhaps this situation made her that uncomfortable. Naruto frowned slightly. He had no choice but accept. Sure, he said. The dining room was spacious, but there was nothing more than a large table and chairs inside it. The food was prepared as she'd said. After settling down, Naruto looked at Tamari. They made you wear that kimono. It wasn't a question, but a statement. Yeah, Tamari said. Her father had been insistent that she look good for Naruto. Obviously, her father was more concerned about the kind of benefit this relationship will do for Sanagakure. Her father always thought of the village and its future. With this contract, he'd secured Suna's future, and he wasn't going to do anything to jeopardize it. Not unless something more valuable came up. Tamari knew that Naruto was the only child of Konoha's yellow flash. As far as she was concerned, only her, her father and his trusted advisor, Baki, knew the secret. The council didn't even know of the contract. She guessed it was only a matter of time before they caught the wind of it. Next time don't wear it. If anybody says otherwise, tell them Uzumaki Naruto says, I look fine just as I am, Naruto said with a small smile. Tamari didn't force a smile this time. She gave Naruto a true warm smile. Thanks, she truly appreciated the gesture. She didn't hate Naruto because of this. He was nice to her.
and the last time he had been very honest with her. How relieved had she been? She was expecting someone older who would be trying tricks on her, but she had been surprised to see someone younger. Itadakimasu both said as they prepared to eat their meal. How are you calm about this whole thing? Tamari asked. Even last time he looked so calm and relaxed, despite it being their first meeting. My mother was thinking about my well-being when she agreed to it, Naruto said. I can't say the same about my father, Tamari said bitterly. We are in this situation. Either we learn to live with it or remain bitter about it. I would rather choose the former, though. I'm still seven years old, there is still much time to grow around the issue, don't you think? Tamari didn't need to think about it to give a nod. Still, despite saying those words, Naruto had been told by Kakashi that there was a high chance that he may just end up not being with Tamari. The agreement between Suna and Konoha was between the current cages. Should another cage take over before they are even married, the cage was within his right to declare it void. Since the agreement wasn't public, it was easy for either nation to pull out without fearing a backlash. Besides, the only reason the adults wanted them to know each other now was so that they could develop some bond as his mother had forced another fine print that clearly said, should Uzumaki Naruto be unwilling or having not developed any feelings for Sabaku no Tamari, he has the power to say no to the marriage. Still, he would have to pay a hefty fee and offer some sealing scrolls to be allowed to get out of the marriage. Tamari wasn't told of this, and his mother had told him to give it his all. For his own sanity and crumbling hope in humans, he was trying. Two days later, moments like these, he really dreaded. The Sandame has tried by all means to make things comfortable for the Uchiha clan just as he has tried with Naruto. But it just seems like all his efforts have been without rewards. He has not been completely useless as Konoha's third Hokage. Not by any means, but there were things that were happening around Konoha that seemed to be beyond his reach and control. He really wished that Minato was present at this time. Between the two of them, they could figure things out. He was old. He no longer possessed the influence he once had when he was still sharp, physically. The Uchiha knew of this. From an undeciding Hokage, he learned to decide things for himself, he learned to take the decisions that he wouldn't normally take. This had been forced upon him by the death of Minato and the consequences that followed. Iwagakure had tried sending spies to check on the village's power to see if it could try something, but Danzo had stepped in and dealt with the threats. He was thankful for the war hawk a reason he still kept him despite the man having once tried to take his life by attempting to poison Kakashi against him. Naruto was another issue that forced him to step up. He couldn't allow things to get out of hand, lest he wished to live with regrets for the rest of his life. The blonde was a hero in his eyes and he treated him as such. He couldn't force the villagers to offer the same thoughts, but he had ensured that none took their frustrations off the boy. This is a case that he had constantly reminded the villagers that he wasn't called the god of shinobi for nothing. The Sandame Hokage leaned back to his chair, tried by all means to appear strong in the front of Uchiha Fugaku, the head of the Uchiha clan and Konoha's military police force. There was trouble between Konoha as a whole and the Uchiha clan. Trouble that could spell disaster if not handled in a careful manner. I hope you kept things tidy in the village while I was away, the Sandame started calmly. Naturally, Uchiha Fugaku simply said, My son has been out of the village for a number of days. I usually don't question Anbu missions, but I feel that he was taken away hastily as he told me he had no upcoming missions, and his squad mates remain in the village. Itachi-kun has gone on a secret mission with Jiraiya, the third said calmly. You know that I don't believe for a second that your clan had nothing to do with the Kyubi attack, right? He'd already told the man what he thought, but it didn't stop him from saying it whenever he got the chance. Fugaku gave a subtle nod, unfortunately the same cannot be said for the villagers and the clan heads, his tone was cold, no hatred dripping from it, just silently cold. That is indeed unfortunate, the Sandame said. Despite many assurances to the villagers that your clan had nothing to do with it, they won't believe otherwise. They are hell-bent on blaming someone just as they refuse to accept Naruto-kun. I only wonder what they will do if they learn that an Uchiha or at least the Sharingan had manipulated the Kyubi. Where is this going, Hokage-sama? They'd already been through this and he would rather deal with clan matters than go through this again. Your son has gone on a mission in Kirigakure. We're told that the Yandaimi Mizukage is being controlled by a powerful Genjutsu. 
Fugaku took a few moments to digest those words, so you believe that if this is true, then it may be the same Uchiha who manipulated the Kayubi. Yes, Sarutobi said, if this happens to be true, Itachi-kun may be able to figure out the identity of this person. With that, we may be able to hunt down the culprit and bring him to justice. Perhaps then we will be able to stop the madness going around the village. That wouldn't solve the Uchiha's problems. Their problems went far beyond the borders of being untrusted by the villagers. They were pushed away from the village. They no longer had any political power despite operating the police force. That was a matter that needed to be resolved. Fugaku doubted anything would be solved unless they took action though. Things with the villagers have already gone past the line of return. Is that all? The third nodded, can you organize a meeting between your clan elders so we can sit once more again and think of a way to deal with the impending issue? I will see if they are willing, no guarantees given and the Uchiha clan leader disappeared from the office. This doesn't look good at all, the third said to himself. He could only hope Itachi will bring home some good news. He could only hope. Evening, later that day, Kakashi smiled fondly looking at the Kashina through the window from outside where he sat along with a studying Naruto. This reminds me of the time Minato sensei had me watch over your mother when she was still carrying you. I used to watch her all day long. So mother tells me. Naruto responded, flipping a page on the book he was reading. Kakashi sighed. How was your visit in Sanagakure? Surprisingly pleasant, Naruto said. Kakashi gave the blonde a creepy eye smile. Oh, did you and Tamari get to know each other well enough? The tone the Janin used was enough for Naruto to leave his book and look up to him. The Janin was suggesting something he couldn't quite figure out. Before he could say anything, his mother's voice burst through the open kitchen window. Kakashi, what are you telling my son? She shouted. Kakashi smiled nervously, well ah, he chuckled nervously. The woman could climb out of the window and give him a chase if he gave the wrong answer. How she had known what he was thinking was a mystery he could never puzzle together. I was just asking how things went in Sanagakure. Kashina gave the man a long stare, you better, she said. Because I swear Kakashi, if you fill my son with lewd things, I will tear off that mask, burn your book collection and make you wear guy's jumpsuit for a month. Do you understand me, Kakashi? Yes, ma'am. Kakashi gave a stiff salute. He was even barred from reading his precious chan in front of Naruto. Not even the Sandane could take out his copy when Naruto was present. Kashina smiled pleasantly. Good, she closed the door and went back to her cooking. No wonder Minato sensei always feared going home when he knew he'd done something she wouldn't like, Kakashi said to himself. He looked back at Naruto, did you meet her siblings? No, Naruto said with a shake of his head. I met them last time. It was just me and Tamari this time. Besides, we didn't say for too long as Gigi said it wasn't safe to leave the village for too long. Kakashi nodded. When are you going to see her again? He wanted to be there so that he could spy on them. He was really interested on how Naruto was handling things. Yes, they were just kids. But, he trailed off when he realized that Kashina might just jump out of the window. I don't know, Naruto said, closing his book. He sighed, went silent for a few moments. Looks like I'll be joining the academy. That's wonderful Naruto, Kakashi said with a smile. I wish I could walk you on your first day, but I'll be leaving early tomorrow morning for a mission. That is fine, Naruto said. Still, Itachi isn't here, you're going away, I'm going to be in the academy. I sense that my training will become hindered. Don't worry about it, Kakashi said. He took out a scroll from his vest and threw it at Naruto, who caught it. The Sandane told me he told you that you had to do chakra control exercises. He'd given me that scroll on methods I should teach you but I have this mission. So read through it and when I return, we'll pick up from there. Thanks, Naruto said. Don't worry about it, Kakashi said with another eye smile. The following day, notebook, check, lunch, check. Kashina did her checklist as she looked for Naruto's backpack. Do you need chips, or should I just bring you ramen during lunchtime? Naruto sighed. His mother was way over the moon by this situation. He doubted she even slept at night because of the excitement that was rushing through her blood. It was as though she was the one going to the academy, not him. Everything is in there, Okawa-san. I don't want you to miss anything on your first day. You have to impress the other kids today, Kashina said. Did you ask Ino-chan if there was homework? Mother, it is my first day. I don't have to write homework. And Ino doesn't know I'm going to be joining her class today, Naruto said, 
taking his school bag from his mother's hands. The crimson scarf she'd bought for him the other day placed safely around his neck. Kashina Chan, Makoto shouted outside their house. Oh, Sasu Chan's mom is here. Come on, dear, let's go, Kashina said, literally dragging her son out. Naruto didn't mind, it was his mother after all. Hello, Makoto Chan, Sasu Chan. The red haired Uzumaki greeted the two Uchihas. You look bright as always, Sasu. She added, pinching the boy on the cheek. Sasuke reddened a bit, while smiling at Kashina. You look full of life as always, the boy said. Makoto looked at Naruto, offered him a smile. Well, this is my surprise, she said. I don't consider it as such, Naruto said. When the surprise come, you'll be shocked. Can't wait, the retired Jonin looked at Kashina, let's go. We don't want to be late. Sasuke, Naruto grunted, taking the front with the Uchiha while the mothers walked behind, engaged in mother talks. Naruto, Sasuke responded with a grunt of his own. What change? Oh he was happy with the situation. With the blonde in the academy, he won't have to be worrying about him spending valuable time with Itachi, when that brother of his was not doing any missions. Nothing much, Naruto responded with a shrug. You look excited, I can finally get one over you. We're currently tied one to one. You beat me with shuriken throwing while I did better with the fireball jutsu. He always did best, he was the best in the academy. Naruto couldn't unseat him, not when he could do something about it. You're keeping score? Naruto looked at the Uchiha from the corner of his eye. He wanted to remind the Uchiha that he humiliated him the last time they sparred in taijutsu. But if the Uchiha was suffering from selective memory loss, then he wasn't going to remind him. No, Sasuke said, he said nothing further as they silently made their way towards the academy. When they finally reached the academy gates, Kashina knelt down placed her hands on Naruto's shoulders. Now go on and make your mother proud, okay? I want you to get good grades and don't sleep in class. If anyone tries anything, either student or teacher, call me and I will be there to straighten that person out okay? Yes mother. Good, Kashina said, placing a tender kiss on the blonde's forehead. She looked at Sasuke, show him around, will you? Sasuke nodded, let's go, the Uchiha said to Naruto, who looked at his mother for a full minute, unmoving before he finally relented and followed Sasuke. Watching the boys leave, Kashina spoke, I say my son is the best and he will graduate top of his class. Makoto shook her head, I do agree Naruto is smart, but my Sasuke-kun is a genius. He takes after his older brother. Are you willing to put a bet on it? Academy. Oh no, Ino moaned, staring at the entrance of the class. Naruto had just walked in with Sasuke. This was not happening, not to her. How is she going to handle this mess? She definitely has to chose between the two of them. Naruto wouldn't be liked by the fangirls if he stayed close to Sasuke, and she wouldn't be able to do anything to stop them from insulting her Black Knight. Her mother would expect her to make hang around the blonde. He has bailed her out on a few occasions. It didn't matter that he did it with little care. The effort was what mattered. Besides, she knew he cared a little. He just wouldn't admit it as it would be like betraying his mother. Ino just watched the two boys. Sasuke chose to sit at the front row, but Naruto wasn't going to do any of that. He just looked at Ino, who was staring at him. Surprise, no emotion in his voice. Are you lost? Ino asked. Aruka didn't tell them they would be having a new student today. He had to be lost. She couldn't have him here. It would ruin things for her as she would have to offer some of her time to him. After all, she couldn't leave her Black Knight alone. Is this Aimuno Aruka's class? Yes. Then no. I'm not lost, Naruto said. Why? Why are you trying to ruin my perfect academy life? Naruto blinked a couple of times before sighing. You're not obligated to spend time with me, Ino. Of course I am. Naruto just shook his head and went up to the back of the class. He took a seat on the top left corner, and ignored everyone else who was staring at him. The looks weren't of hatred, just curiosity. Understandable since he was joining a class that has already covered more ground. He should be in a lower class, but the Sandane thought this to be best for him as it had his peers. Once the Chunin teacher walked into the class, the question popped up, Uruka sensei who's the blonde? A boy asked, pointing at Naruto who looked as though he was in a faraway world. Uruka looked at Naruto, stared for a few moments before responded. That is Uzumaki Naruto. He will be attending with us from today. Isn't that unfair? 
Another kid asked. He was recommended by the Sandame Hokage, Maruka merely said, not bothering to go into detail. Saying he was recommended by the Sandame would stop any questions but at the same time, it would give the idea that Naruto was receiving special treatment from the Hokage. Oh well, it didn't matter since he didn't care. Today, we will focus on. After three hours of complete waste of his valuable time, Naruto had been justified in his reservations about the academy being useless. Mother must truly hate me for forcing me to go through this, the blonde said to himself. I hear you, a somewhat tired voice said, just in front of Naruto. The boy who'd spoken, turned slightly to face Naruto. If I ditch, my mother will drag me here by force. Naruto nodded. His mother would do something like that. I can see that happening. A less troublesome way to get through this is to sleep during class, the boy said, turning away once more. Off to more sleep. Uruka cut in an irritated figure with some frustrations leaking out of his ears in a cloud of smoke. His eyes were fixed to the menace that was in his class. A menace he was forced in his every day of life at the academy to teach. Not that the boy ever paid him any attention when he spoke. He thought he would be relieved if the boy wasn't taking any interest in his lectures, but it annoyed the crap out of him whenever the blonde spotted that look of pure indifference. There was even a day he had been tempted to run up to the boy and drag him out of his class by his hair. The thought had been crushed instantly when he thought of who birthed the boy. The mother would certainly kill him. Literally. No doubt about that. Uzumaki Naruto. Uruka couldn't even begin to remember the day the blonde had so even paid attention to his class. From day two, the blonde had always put on a look of indifference, never taking part in anything. As much as Uruka wanted to throw the blonde out of the class, he couldn't do that. Not without a noteworthy reason. It would get him in trouble with the Sandame. Not to mention that woman who would snap his neck in a mother fury. Uruka could remember the day he'd made a surprise test just to fail the blonde. Imagine his surprise, when the little irritation who didn't pay attention to his classes, managed to pass his test. Even though half of the class failed because the test was a difficult surprise test that wasn't meant to be passed by everyone. Loath as he made to admit, Naruto wasn't stupid, he was smart. It had pissed him to no end when the blonde had so graciously offered to set the test for him to make them a little difficult. That wasn't all. There had been a day he had caught the blonde looking outside the window. Not listening to him, he had inwardly smirked at the thought that came to his mind. Imagine to his utter dismay when the bland had not even stuttered or even looked red-handed at being caught gazing outside the class. The blonde had so simply said, I can't repeat what you said because I wasn't listening. Uruka had been left flabbergasted by the response. Normally a student would try to initiate something that he didn't say or try to make an excuse. But the blonde didn't try anything. He stated the situation as it was. No attempt to hide the truth. The blonde had made it clear to him that he was only in the academy because his mother had forced him and the Sandame was blackmailing him to do so. To show how useless the academy was to him, the blonde had gone as far as to say he could do the graduate exam as he was, despite being in the academy for just two weeks. If Aruka had his way around everything, he would have just given the blonde the damn exam just so he could get out of his sight. Some teachers could just ignore him and the blonde would indifferently return the favor. But that was something that Uruka couldn't do, no matter how hard he tried. The other teachers have tried all tricks to get the blonde to be held back in his academics, but that was useless since he already knew what they taught. When it came to knowledge, the blonde had it in abundance. He had even found it bitterly amusing when one of the teachers came back to the staff room grumbling after he'd gotten into an argument with Naruto over the history of Konohagakure. It turned out that the blonde knew more about it than the teacher. Uruka sighed and settled on the edge of his desk, looking at his students. No one was absent today, which was good. He didn't feel like teaching anything. Well, since they haven't been in the training grounds for some taijutsu demonstration, he decided it was best to take them there. Okay class, settle down, Uruka said a bit loudly. Nobody heard the chunin, or they did just chose to ignore him in favor of continuing with the chatter. If Uruka hadn't become used to this familiar occurrence, a vein would have been throbbing on the side of his forehead right about now. Shut up, that touched the right spot. No matter how many times his loud voice did the trick, Ruka couldn't help but smile in appraisal of his kid's silencing jutsu. 
He always felt content and would smile happily when the jutsu did work its magic to quiet down the little ones. It was a pity to Mizuki though. The Chunin couldn't do a better job than he did. Then again, Mizuki was just his assistant. Naturally, he should be the one getting things done quickly. We'll be going to the training ground today for an exhibition on the Academy Taijutsu Mizuki has taught you, the Chunin said. His announcement was welcomed with smiles by the students who would have anything other than his so-called boring classes. Yeah right, Uruka knew they loved him despite calling his classes boring. They just liked going out there as it was a place they could talk however they wished and they could also watch their beloved Uchiha beat up someone. Uruka failed miserably to suppress the urge to frown when he met Naruto's eyes head on after his announcement. The look was still indifferent, the eyes still blank of any emotion, as most of the time. It really frustrated the Chunin that he could never read the blonde because he always hid everything behind that untouchable mask of indifference. You're in trouble, Shikamaru muttered to Naruto, seeing the look their sensei was giving the blonde. While he didn't seem like he was interested, he knew full well that Naruto and their sensei had a rather rocky relationship, if their interactions could be considered a relationship. Uruka held something against the blonde, he was certain of this, but Naruto didn't seem to care. No, he just didn't care. Furthermore, he paid no mind to whatever Ruka had to say, and was willing to go as far as to brush off the Chunin. Naturally, that made the Chunin infuriated with the blonde. It appears so, Naruto said. I do wonder what sort of trick he has planned for me this time. Probably going to get you matched with the best in Taijutsu, Shikamaru said. If Naruto could get beat, it would embarrass him and force him to pay attention to class a bit. At least that is what he thought Uruka had in mind. It would also be some payback for the many times Naruto has had the class laughing at the Chunin. Uruka had it better though. The other teachers, Shikamaru shook his head, how he pitied them. Naruto was just downright blunt in his assessment of the academy and its education. He made no attempt whatsoever to mask his disdain over the curriculum offered. The fact that they taught simple taijutsu and offered no real training on the expectations of the shinobi world did no better. Shikamaru could concur with the blonde on that note. His father does tell him bits about the shinobi world and he knew academy teachings offered little comfort for what was out there in the wild. The ones who suffered the most were nun clan children and those from not so shinobi families. Shikamaru didn't have to suffer because his father made him train his mind at home. He was learning clan techniques, so were other children from clans. The others weren't getting any training whatsoever and they continued to look towards the day they become shinobi with false expectations and blind hopes. Just thinking about it made the Nara air sigh. Naruto snorted upon hearing Shikamaru's response. Like hell anyone in the academy could embarrass him. From what he has gathered so far, Sasuke was the top dog in the field. He knew the Uchiha better than anyone. Sasuke may be better than him executing that damned fire jutsu, the Uchiha has never beaten him in taijutsu, even when he does go easy on the boy, just so no to wound his pride too much that it will earn him a Sharingan enemy. I don't have any interest in participating in anything, but I guess I won't have a choice if I'm forced, Naruto said. His eyes narrowed at the Nara air. An idiot? Not the least. The Nara was smart, even so more than Sasuke. Naruto doubted he could win against the Nara in a battle of intellect. The only problem was that the Nara made no effort. He made no effort in anything whatsoever. Naruto believed the only time the Nara would get serious would be in life-threatening situations. He will force you, Shikamaru said. At this stage, Choji decided to partake in the conversation. You should try to get along with Aruka sensei That will make your life a lot easier. You won't have to worry about him trying to trip you over. At least we don't have to worry about teachers because we won't be seeing much of them from next year. You just have to survive this year. I doubt we are ever going to hug and kiss, Naruto said. If I survive this year without suffocation by this environment, I will consider it an accomplishment. He suppressed the urge to frown from the knowledge that there was still a number of months before the year ends. It's not so bad, Naruto, Choji said with a smile. You just have to loosen up a bit and you'll enjoy it as much as I do. That said, Choji felt a sudden urge to fill up his crying gut with some chips. Are you guys just going to sit there, or are we going to follow the others? Kiba's voice sounded, breaking the three out of their little eyes. You seem a little happy. Feeling your luck against Sasuke, today? 
Choji asked, looking at the Inazuka air as he got up along with Naruto and Shikamaru. Yeah, I have been training really hard since my last match up with that bastard, Kiba responded with all the confidence he could muster. Choji doubted it would make any difference and Sasuke was anything but a bastard. The term just came to mind because Kiba was just an idiot before Sasuke's eyes. He couldn't fault the Uchiha for having such thoughts. It was improbable that the Inazuka would do something, genius, in front of the Uchiha. Not when he lost the little rationality his mind has when he is one-on-one -on -one with the Uchiha. I hope you do well if Aruka picks you, Choji still said. Kiba just grinned. He knew he was going to do well and then all the girls would follow him instead of that arrogant idiot. He could almost see himself happily suffocating in the warm hugs and kisses the girls would be giving him. Shikamaru wanted to keep his mouth shut as opening it would rouse a troublesome dialogue with the Inazuka, but he couldn't help himself, don't dream too much, he said lightly, having noticed Kiba's dreamy look. Kiba scoffed. Shikamaru was incapable of doing what he could. Who was he to tell him anything? He looked at Naruto at the corner of his left eye, as opposed to responding to Shikamaru's light warning. Though Naruto could feel the look from the eyes of the brash and arrogant Inazuka air, he didn't bother to react to it. In his days being in the academy, there were some people that he would rather not befriend, especially stupid people. His mother may not agree, but what Kashina didn't know wouldn't hurt her. It may wound him a bit, but all reasons pointed that he was justified in his decision and that made him feel good. Shikamaru and Choji were alright. They didn't bother with stupid questions. In fact, he could relax with the former while reading his book and the Nara air lost in the mystery of the clouds above him. That was the perfect friendship. The conversations did carry some weight, and much more worthwhile than discussing which girl was hottest in their class with Kiba and other idiots in the academy. Although Kiba has been tempted to call Naruto an idiot in a couple of occasions, he knew better. The blonde gave the genius of their class a run for his money. Still, that didn't make him like the blonde. He carried him above others, almost like he was their superior or something. Well, at least he had something to poke fun about with the blonde. He wasn't going to start it now. The four reached the training grounds at the academy, with the others already in waiting. No need to be at the front to hear whatever that Aruka had to say. The four chose to stay at the back. Wonder about their own business as Aruka started with his prepared short speech. Okay guys, today we are going to do some demonstration. I want to see if you have grasped the stances you have been taught. You are gonna have to execute the stances in a fight, Aruka said. First up, I want two girls to volunteer. The lively Ino Yamanaka was quick to take center stage. Another girl followed suit. This caused the class to form a circle around the two girls for everyone to see clearly. Remember, this is just a friendly spar. No need for anything harmful, Aruka said. He got them to do the friendship sign before getting them to engage. Begin. Naruto's look of indifference twisted into a look of disdain as his eyes were brutally forced to witness this shambolic chicken fight between the two girls. Really, his eyes were just screaming at his hands to pluck them out to save them from the horrors. How could Academy Kids fight so pathetic? It made watching turtles do a 80 meters sprint all fun. Even their teacher had the face to show his displeasure in the scuffle. It wasn't considered to be a fight. Not by any chance. 100-year-old grannies could fight better. Ino did win. Cheers to her fans. If it was a comedy show, Naruto wouldn't have been blamed if he had uncharacteristically thrown tomatoes at the two girls while shouting, you suck. It was just horrible, and he felt relieved when they stopped doing whatever they were doing. It was even an embarrassment to think that Ino was associated with him and was a clan heir. What were these parents teaching their children? Ino walked towards Naruto as Aruka began talking once more, calling two more girls to demonstrate proper academy taijutsu. That was pathetic. If I was the one who taught you, I'd wish for an execution, Naruto said bluntly at the blonde-haired girl. Ino huffed, as if you could do better, she said. Seeing the look Naruto gave her, she huffed once more, pink tints on her cheeks. Naruto was a better fighter. She'd seen him beat bullies older than him. He took after his mother. I haven't been training that much, okay. I would be shocked if you said you trained at all. I think even a child who started walking a day ago can do better than that, Naruto said, once more bluntly. Ino glared at Naruto for his responses. She was used to it, but that didn't mean it made her smile when she hears of it. She was tempted to even curse him. 
but it wouldn't do any good. He was her black knight after all. If you think I sucked that much, why don't you help me? Yeah, like you want to train instead of hanging out with your friends, Choji said, earning himself a glare from Ino. But it was the truth. Hence the boy only shrugged. Looking back at the ring, Aruka already had Sasuke at his corner, his eyes looming above Naruto. Naruto, why don't you come here and spar with Sasuke? Naruto shrugged, I'd rather not, the blonde said. I insist, Aruka said rather forcefully. Naruto stood still. Kiba took the chance to mock the blonde. What, can't fight without your mother cheering for you? Mama's boy? Naruto didn't look at Kiba, but he still responded, Kiba, regardless of what you eat and whatever possesses you, do not speak of my other. That said, Naruto went on to face Sasuke, who was smirking at him. How he wished he could just slap that smirk off his face in a second and go home to do something useful. I thought you were going to chicken out on me, Sasuke said with a smirk. Naruto wanted to frown. He took no joy in exchanging cheeky remarks with anyone. He could state his observations in the way they were without coloring anything, but an exchange of a talk like this wasn't what he came here for. No wonder he didn't like Kiba's company. Still, he resisted the urge to frown, and put on his indifferent mask, looked at the young Uchiha for a few moments before forwarding his eyes to the Chunin teacher on his right. Can we get this over with already? Naruto wasn't the only one who resisted the urge to frown, Uruka did. Ironically, it was because of the words Naruto had said to him. The Chunin teacher sighed before looking between the two boys. He knew that they were not hostile to each other, and mostly came to school together. Sometimes it was Sasuke's mother or Naruto's mother who came around after school. Sometimes the two boys went home together. Still, they weren't exactly friends. Uruka knew that Sasuke wouldn't want to lose in this sparring session. There was no one who took his academy studies seriously than Sasuke. The Chunin thought perhaps it was because the boy was burdened with a lot of expectations. He was a brother to a prodigy, and cast in the shadow of his brother. Naturally, he has to put more effort in his work to step out of that shadow. It was a line of thought that made Aruka confident that Sasuke wouldn't play with Naruto, but would do exceedingly well to fulfill his expectations. The blonde had stolen the Uchiha's spot as the top dog in the last only, real, test he had them write a few days ago. This was a chance to redeem himself. And Uruka had his fingers crossed, praying that Sasuke does so with flying colors. In his anticipation, Uruka decided to forego all proper traditions before a friendly spar. Begin, he simply shouted. Sasuke lost his smirk. He matched Naruto's mask of indifference as he readied himself for assault. His brother has always told him to hide his emotions during a battle, for that will make him difficult to read. He could never read Naruto, unless he decides to give out that look of complete utter boredom when the situation calls for it. The young Uchiha darted towards Naruto straight on. It was an impressive speed for an academy student. As soon as Sasuke reached Naruto, he jumped up slightly before twisting in midair. His right foot was sent straight at Naruto's head. The blonde jumped back slightly to avoid the kick that would have sent him to the side. As soon as Sasuke landed down on the ground, he charged at Naruto once again, flashed a left hook which was blocked, then another, blocked as well. He attempted a right punch straight at Naruto's face. The blonde caught the punch, held Sasuke's fist firmly, before his right foot stomped on the Uchiha's left. He then yanked Sasuke towards him and grabbed the Uchiha by his shirt's neck. I have been training longer than you have. Itachi may be teaching you taijutsu, but my teacher is better than him in that regard. I have beaten you before, while holding back, do you think you can miraculously do better than me, Sasuke? Naruto asked, in a low whisper, just so only the Uchiha could hear him. Sasuke gritted his teeth and tried to headbutt Naruto, but Naruto used his hold on the Uchiha to push him back while learning back slightly. The fact that his foot was still on the Uchiha's made him off balance owed to his push. Naruto took his foot off Sasuke's allowing the Uchiha to balance himself. The blonde looked up for a moment. Shall we end it? We have dinner tonight at your house. Sasuke winced at the thought. Their mothers would certainly go at it if one of them won. It didn't matter who won. Both he and Naruto would suffer from their exchange. Sasuke had seen it when Naruto got better marks in the first real test. Those women had made some sort of a bet, and it was downright annoying when everything became heated debate about who was better. 
Surprisingly to everyone around, Sasuke nodded. He smiled though, a bit forced. You owe me the next time we train with Itachi, he said before looking at Aruka. I guess you can call it a draw, he said before walking away. Aruka frowned, said nothing for a few moments, allowing the words Sasuke had said to him to play over and over again. He didn't get what he wanted. Frustrating, at this rate, Mizuki was going to have his way. If Aruka's hearing was working quite perfectly, he was sure he heard the Chunin say that he would get the blonde into the training grounds and accidentally hit him hard while teaching him something. Sighing, Aruka looked at his students before speaking, take an hour break. And be back at class after which, he said, a bit lowly and walked away. Wow, I have never seen Aruka sensei so down before, Churji said, looking at the retreating form of their Chunin teacher. You really did a number on him this time, huh? He added, addressing Naruto. The blonde merely sighed, walking towards his favorite tree to do something useful. Shikamaru decided to return to class quickly to get some much needed sleep while Choji followed because his school bag was in class. His possessions were there as well. As he settled down beside the tree, Naruto didn't take out his book as he would have liked. He was faced by a mob of girls. He looked up to them. What? His tone was sharp. Stay away from Sasuke-kun and stop trying to compete with him. You can never be like him or even better him. You're a nobody. How boring. To think that he had been made to come here to this place just to listen to this nonsense. Worst of all, to be creeped out by the fact that Ino hanged with such company. The girl was smart. How could she lower herself to bow before this crowd and follow the usual chants and parade? Naruto was certain that another reason Shikamaru didn't like eating with him at lunch was that he feared these fools. Apparently, everyone was afraid of the fangirls as they could do anything. He had even witnessed them give Aruka some death glares. Naruto wouldn't even be surprised if the girls plotted murder if someone made their prized Uchiha look bad. Naruto didn't fear them. They were just pathetic girls he could beat up with his eyes closed if they tuned on the violence volume. He has been in some sort of one-sided bad blood with them because of the perceived closeness to their Uchiha. His stating of the fact that they were going to have dinner at Sasuke's house must have been the breaking point. The blonde looked just behind the girls. Ino was standing there, looking conflicted. Naruto just sighed. He has ignored the fangirls when they turned their attention towards him. He knew it bothered the girl that she couldn't do anything. Well, she could. The consequences were just not good for her. Naruto took out his book, flipped it, opening a page before responding. I heard you the last time you spoke, he said. Now will you be kind enough to leave me alone? I can't read in peace while you're standing there. Are you dismissing us like that? Someone shouted. Naruto suppressed a wince the loudness of the voice. His eyes fixed on the girls. It was a rather stern look that clearly told them to piss of or else. They may be idiots filled with images of Sasuke in their heads, but they knew danger when they saw it. Heads held high, the girls walked away. Ino took the time to crawl beside her black knight. Once more again, she curled up beside the tree, knees pressed against her chest. I'm sorry. If Naruto thought he had no emotions or did not care for the blonde, then he had to crush this thought right away. It wasn't the first time that the girl sat so pathetically sad like this when bad things happened to him. It bothered him greatly. He wanted to pull his hair because he failed to understand why it bothered him so much to see her so miserable. I'm sorry, Ino repeated again, eyes locked down with the ground. You've always been there for me. Always. Whenever I call for your help, you always help me out. Be but when you need me, I can't do anything. I just watch, she whispered sadly. That miserable tone. He hated it. She never used it before the academy. You shouldn't bother with it. I can handle. I handled them, Naruto tried to be dismissive about it. I know you can handle them, Ino said. But you already take a lot outside the academy, Naruto frowned. And here, they still call you worthless, a nobody, a loser and other bad names. You're not worthless. Loathe I made to admit it, you're just better than Sasuke. You're not trying to be like him or anything. You don't deserve it, most of all, he was her black knight. There are a lot of things that we deserve but never get them Ino. I know, but I'm in a position to stop them from calling you unpleasant names they hear outside. I'm your friend, but I'm afraid to do anything because I might lose their friendship. I can stop it, but I'm afraid and I comfort myself by coming here. It even bothers me knowing that you can handle them, but can't stop them from saying whatever they want. 
Naruto frowned. He wasn't going to read his book. But that wasn't the problem. This kind of conversation he was having with Ino was the problem. Honestly, he hated being put in this kind of position. It bothered him. Ino worried because she cared for him, just like the Sandame and Kakashi. Strengthening his mask, Naruto opened his mouth to speak. I cannot tell you what to do. But I don't need you to fight my battles. I can do that. On another note, what do you see them anyway? You're smart, they are not. You wouldn't understand, Ino said. I won't disagree there, Naruto sighed. Just don't worry about me. I can handle myself. What they say doesn't bother me. Compared to what he has taken from the villagers, a bunch of idiotic fangirls couldn't even as much as scratch him. He didn't spare them a thought. They were not worth it. It isn't a matter of whether it bothers you or not, Ino said. Why couldn't he get it? Your inability to do anything to stop the situation from occurring is the problem. Naruto said, eyeing the blonde briefly before looking into the empty space ahead. Finally, it bothered her because of it. Naruto has always helped her. She felt some guilt because she couldn't help him, especially when it was her friends bothering him. She should be stopping them. But she was caught between two things, and she didn't know what to do. If you don't want it to bother you so much, do something about it. Perhaps then you will feel better, and he won't be forced to go through another conversation like this. I'm not like you, really? You've always been strong and head on. Was it all just a mask? Of course no. Ino raised a voice a bit. Her expression changed a bit as she carefully laid out her next words. How about I buy you ramen later on today? I know you love it. Just don't tell anyone. That's cool, but do you really think I will tell Sasuke? He doesn't even take interest in you. Nor even thinks of you, Naruto said, earning a glare from Ino. Trust me, I train with him sometimes, I used to live at his house. Don't you think I should know better? Think of something better to do other than fawning at Sasuke because he sees you as annoying girls. He will not notice you. Ino glared at Naruto. He just killed her mood. But she knew he should know Sasuke better. Speak more like that and you'll have that ramen on your own. Naruto gave a nonchalant shrug. I wouldn't complain either way. I do, however, do enjoy the meal when someone is buying. So, I will keep it down. The blonde glanced at Ino for a moment, his expression a bit serious. A word of advice. Things start small, and eventually grow. Don't let your crush grow, Ino. You will turn out to be an annoying little girl and a failure for a kunoichi if you grow up like this. Watch it, Naruto, Ino warned. Naruto just dismissed her warning with a wave of his hand. I wasn't done, he said. Ino, you're smart. Don't let this fangirl attitude consume your every thought. Sasuke is nothing special. You're something else. You shouldn't be throwing yourself like this, you're not cheap. If I had any interest, I wouldn't allow you to run after me, rather, I would run after you. That said, Naruto went back to his book. Ino slapped both her cheeks and looked away from Naruto. A few minutes later, the damn class once more again. What Naruto would give just to be locked away from this hellish academy? What has he accomplished or even learned that is worthwhile? To be more precisely, what has this academy taught him that will further help him keep his mother safe and his own life safe? The answer came quick as a striking lightning. Nothing. He had told the Sandame of this again and again, but the old man and his mother keep telling him that even though he doesn't learn anything academically, the academy was still good for him. He had to make friends his age, they argued. Still, Naruto saw the glaring holes this time-wasting academy was putting into his usual training adventures. Oh well, he was here. There was no use brooding over it over and over again. The situation wasn't going to change. He wasn't going to go against his mother's wishes. At least on something like this. It sort of gave her hope that he could have a normal childhood. He was still young, and could still grow up with a few good friends. Naruto hadn't thought of that. The only perfect world he had thought of having was one with him and his mother. A bit bitterly, he used to wish for one with both parents. Make the best out of the situation and try to grow around it, he told Tamari. But here he was trying to run away from a situation his mother had brought to him. Why couldn't he live by the very same words he preached? Naruto didn't like to believe that he was a hypocrite. Far from it. Application in this situation was just a bit difficult. But he understood that brooding over it would only make him miserable, and that would hurt his mother. Kashina wanted to see him smile and play with other kids. His priorities were ensuring his mother was safe and that she was happy. If he kept resisting, she would only frown at him. 
Naruto sighed, looking at the back of Ino, seated in the front row. There is time, he thought. That girl was troublesome though. Thinking about it gave him a slight frown. So Naruto shifted away from her. He hadn't been lucky to take off his gaze from her without notice. Shikamaru smoked, causing Naruto to turn his eyes towards the Nara air. You look like you're thinking deep, Shikamaru said. He was sitting on Naruto's right hand, at the rear row. His gaze turned towards Naruto's object of interest for a moment before lazily eyeing Naruto once more. You haven't told me, how did you come to know Ino? She doesn't seem to be like your type. Naruto gave a non-committal shrug, you didn't ask, he said. Right, Shikamaru said. He realized he didn't really want to know how the two met. Shikamaru eyed the blonde with a faintly curious gaze. Naruto noted, but chose not to comment on. The Nara weighed on his thoughts for a couple of seconds before releasing a breath. My father wants me to befriend you, the Nara said. It was easier this way than being sneaking about it. Naruto was too smart to remain oblivious of it. And it would be too damned troublesome to be caught in that situation and be forced to explain himself. Saying it now meant he didn't have to trouble himself with anything in the near future. If Naruto was surprised, he didn't show. His response didn't even strike a precise spot. It merely kept one guessing, I see, the response came easily enough. You're not surprised, Shikamaru stated. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, he added. Show me at my house after the academy. You up for it? Why not? I could do something to sharpen my mind while killing some time, Naruto said. Three hours later, Hokage office. The Sandame Hokage smiled warmly when his favorite blonde walked into the office he has laid claim for longer than any of his predecessors, as well as his short-lived successor. Academy done for the day? Here is an asked. Despite his question, he knew quite well Naruto couldn't ditch the academy because his mother wouldn't be happy with him, if he did so. Naruto responded by giving the Sandame a slight nod of his head as he made himself comfortable of the chair in front of the Sandame's desk. He was rather pleased to see that Jiraiya wasn't present. The man was rather persistent in his hunt for some involvement in his life. Naruto reasoned it was better to let the Sanin suffer the cold winds for some time. He was smart enough to know that Jiraiya had his uses. If the man was willing to offer his help, who was he to deny it? The man was a powerful shinobi, one taught by the professor. Stupidity and ignorance would be the only substance that leads him to miss out on a chance to learn something from the man. Naruto looked at the Sandame Hokage with a curious gaze. A brief flash of memories played through before he his lips parted. I had a rather interesting conversation with Shikaku-san. Oh, no surprise was evident in the Sandame's aged face, but the curiosity was hardly hidden. Naruto learned back to the chair, stared into the eyes of the Sandame, trying to configure his thoughts a bit. Yes, he said, taking a pause to think once more. I appreciated his honesty when I asked if you'd sent for him speak to me. Shikaku is good person. I've known him long enough to know he wouldn't lie, besides, lying would have been troublesome to the man, as he would say. If he figured telling the truth was the best option, then he would do so. The Sandame had to keep his mask locked firm when Naruto's curious gaze fell upon him once more as the blonde studied him intently. He reminded himself that the blonde learned reading people. His mental defensives were always on check when he was around those curious eyes. It slightly bothered him that Naruto was never subtle when he studied you. You have really been pulling all strings to change me and keep me happy, Naruto said ever so calmly. What do you think is so special about me that you're willing to do almost everything to ensure all is well? I know you well enough to conclude that you're only thinking about the figure, Naruto took another pause, narrowing his eyes further when the Sandame's mask held up. Is it perhaps something you fear? I would imagine that would be the case. The third released a long breath before relaxing. How bothersome that he had to be on guard against a seven-year-old. Why do you think there is something I fear, Naruto-kun? Sarutobi asked, his tone lacking any curiosity. By that Naruto assumed he may have been right. That I may perhaps leave this village with my mother if I believe it is good for both of us. The chances of that happening are very high, at least when I become strong enough to protect her. There is another issue of Danzo. Does it scare you that I may be tempted to join his brutal crusade in the hunt for power if he offered? Sarutobi frowned. Naruto was dead on. He really should have had Kashina restricted Naruto's entry to Minato's study. 
Then again, Kashina would have just told him about Danzo anyway. You may be right, the third said, not wanting to outright admit that the blonde was right. I just want to create a better and secure future for you, in this village naturally. I want you to grow strong and show Konoha that you're indeed a hero. Perhaps then they will accept you. I know what this treatment you receive has put a rather negative image not only on Konoha but on humanity. That would be because Naruto knew that Jinchurikis were frowned upon in every land. It wasn't just Konoha, but every other village. Konoha may be the one to have tormented him, but Naruto looked far abroad than just Konoha. Perhaps that is because he'd considered leaving this village. Negative image? Naruto repeated, looking to be in thought. I have asked myself this question. What if everyone else who hates me just disappears, would I be free then, would I be able to live in a hate-free world and walk along all streets without a heated glare trying to murder me? Do you know what the answer my reasonable mind gave me, old man? Here is in just frowned. The answer was obvious. An ideal world. Nobody could fault me wishing to be happy. A year ago, if someone had offered to make that wish come true, I would have jumped to the opportunity, Naruto said in an honest statement. This was why the Sandame did everything in his power to make Naruto happy, why his mother pushed for him to make friends. Perhaps he would grow up with his generation in peace, and they would accept him. He wanted the blonde to see that there were nice people out there and that not everyone was bad. Itachi opened up a lot, and my mother always tells me to be optimistic and never lose hope, because once you lose hope. Naruto let the words hang, the Sandame could figure out the rest. I have hope. Perhaps it is the only thing that makes me sane. Perhaps no, rather, the love for and of my mother. It is the fact that you still hope that I try to create a better future for you, the third smiled sadly. I fear I may not live long enough to see you laughing happily, but I still want to do something. I don't want to end my tenure without the assurance that I have done all I could. Silence settled in for a few moments. But it was broken when Jiraiya crashed into the office through the window. The Sanin seemed to notice that Naruto was in the office because he didn't say anything before he put on a nervous smile and spoke. Naruto, the Sanin wasn't sure himself if he was greeting the blonde or just calling his name. Naruto glanced at the Sanin for a moment. Jiraiya, his eyes went back to the Sandame as he stood up. I better be going. As Naruto turned to leave, Jiraiya mustered his courage and spoke, wait. Can, I talk to you, Naruto? His tone was almost pleading. Some other time, Naruto said. The remaining time if the day is reserved for my mother before we go to the Uchiha's. You can talk to me when I'm available. That is, if you don't suddenly disappear. Jiraiya would have flinched, but Naruto clearly had no malice or hatred in his tone. It was just light and he felt as though he was merely stating a fact. For this reason Jiraiya just frowned, but nodded nonetheless. I will be around, he proclaimed rather strongly. Naruto stopped for a moment, turned around to face the Sanin. Jiraiya reasoned it was the firmness of his tone that caused this reaction from Naruto. The blonde looked at Jiraiya inventively. The Sanin noted it was possibly the first time that Naruto had really looked into his eyes. The blonde said nothing though. He turned around and soundlessly felt the office. Jiraiya looked at his sensei, that is a good sign, right? That depends, the Sandame responded. Are planning on disappearing or are you going to stay grounded and take your responsibility? Uchiha compound. Dinner with the Uchihas. For Kashina this was always a pleasant time for her and she knew well enough that Makoto enjoyed this as well. There was an unwritten pact between the Uchiha and the Uzumaki. The main family and the Uzumaki were family, not like family. They may not be related by blood, but they treated each other as family. It was for this reason that Kashina thoroughly enjoyed her time in these occasions. In one of those days, Fugaku had decided to join them. The Uchiha head didn't usually join them during their dinners, not because he just didn't want to. But the man was always busy with the police force and the council. In recent months, he hardly came back here. He was always locked up in his office at the military force headquarters. Naturally, Sasuke was sitting on Itachi's right hand with their mother on the left side. Fugaku sitting by Sasuke's side. On the other side of the table, Naruto was pleasantly sitting by her side, as always. So Naruto, Fugaku, started, looking over to the blonde, taking a temporary pause from eating his meal. Makoto tells me you've been doing excellently well in the academy. Naruto gave a barely noticeable nod. That is the case, he said. 
His tone displayed no form of pride in his record. It was obvious he took no joy in knowing that he was doing excellently better than other students. Fugaku hadn't expected anything less from the blonde. He may be young, but he was an interesting child. He reasoned that losing a father the day you're born, getting a biju sealed inside of you, and then subsequently hated by the village could change a person. Naruto aimed higher and the Uchiha head believed that the blonde would reach what he sought. He had the determination and the will to push on. Fugaku didn't want to frown at the thought of comparing the child of the Minato to his youngest son. Sasuke and Naruto were two different people. On his own right, Sasuke was a genius. Fugaku didn't deny that. This despite the fact that he rarely gave the boy interest. He reasoned that appearing uncaring would force the boy to try harder to surpass his brother. So far it has seemed to work, or so he liked to tell himself. Despite knowing that he was only stating the obvious and what everyone else knew, Fugaku didn't hold himself from stating it, you're not thrilled by it. Well, almost everyone, of course he is thrilled. Kashina butt in, a bit loudly. Right, Naru-chan? Predictably, Naruto's response was to smile warmly to his mother. Of course mother, he said. Itachi inwardly shook his head. He assumed Naruto was agreeing with his mother on a different note. While the glaring truth was that he wasn't proud of his achievements from the academy, Itachi could assume the blonde was still happy that he was proving him, the Sandame and Kakashi wrong. The academy couldn't teach him anything and he would do well even with his eyes closed. At least his presence at the academy gives someone Sasuke can compete with, Makoto added, a little bit down. Of course she wasn't happy that Naruto was doing better than Sasuke. Not for the wrong reasons, but because she was losing her bet to Kashina, and the woman took glee in it. Fugaku nodded in agreement. Competing with Itachi isn't really fair for him. As much as he may try to be like his brother, Sasuke can never quite pull out another Itachi. Fugaku's words seemed to do nothing but crush the raven-haired boy beside Itachi. Even though the Uchiha head saw the deflated look on his son's face, he didn't bother trying to explain the meaning of his words to the boy. Noting Sasuke's despair, Itachi nudged his little brother a little, offering him a small warm smile. What father meant is that you don't think like me, you don't have my determinations, experiences that drove me to become what I have become. Because of this, you can't be another me. However, his smile widened a bit, it doesn't mean you can't surpass me one day. I know you will. That lifted up Sasuke's spirits. Once more, the boy beamed up casting away the gloomy clouds above him that had threatened to drench him in cold depression. Makoto smiled at her son as well. I also believe that you will surpass your brother, Sasu-chan, she said warmly. I will not disappoint you, Okawa-san, Sasuke said, enjoying the faith his mother and brother have in him. I know you won't, Makoto said. Sasuke looked at Naruto, gave the blonde a look that clearly said, hear that? My brother thinks I will surpass him one day, not you. So does my mother. Naruto merely shrugged in response, but that didn't deter Sasuke's spirits. The boy continued to be happy. Naruto could have pointed out as he was now, he could graduate from the academy by the end of the year. But he knew for certain that the Sandame wouldn't permit it. Even his mother would snap if he thought of leaving the academy. Kashina, Fugaku said, his tone mildly curious. I hear your clan is going to be restored, or at least you're going to make an attempt to do so. All eyes turned towards the Uzumaki woman, who had a small smile on her face. It was kind of a smile Naruto had never seen on her. No, she just reserved it for when she thinks fondly of their clan. At least he reasoned. It was likely the case nevertheless. You belong to a clan? Sasuke asked, a raised brow, looking between Naruto and his mother. The only thing, special, about the two he knew was that they were the family of the late Yandaimi Hokage. He wasn't aware Kashina was from a clan. Kashina nodded, her smile turning sad slightly. The Uzumaki clan, she simply said. Sasuke tilted his herd, clearly not satisfied by the response. He has never heard of anything about that. He reasoned that it could have something to do with the fact that Naruto was a Jinchuriki and the fact that he was the son of the Yandaimi Hokage. They were a prestigious clan who resided in their village called the Village Hidden in Whirlpools. They were blood relatives of the Senju clan and had a healthy relationship with the clan. That relationship extended to Konoha. The Shodai Hokage's wife was from the Whirlpools, an Uzumaki woman. Kashina here once lived there before coming here, Makoto explained. 
You say, were. Makoto nodded but didn't explain, Kashina did. My clan was peace-loving. We never took part in the Shinobi Wars despite being allies of Konoha, which was always in the center stage of the wars. Despite this, my clan was known throughout for possessing strong chakra, a strong life force, and most of all, we were masters of Fuenjutsu. Minato is renowned for his use in Fuenjutsu, I was in fact the one who taught him a couple of things. Unfortunately, my clan grew too powerful, and the fact that we never participated in wars meant that our shinobi kept growing. During the Second Shinobi World War, a combined army of Kiri and Kumo attacked us. The clan was wiped out. I only survived because by that time, I had already transferred here in Konoha. So, the blonde was not only smart, a Jinchuriki, but he was from a clan as well. If two villages had to combine their forces in order to fight them, then they had to be powerful. Naturally, Sasuke didn't dare think that the Uzumaki could be a match for the Uchiha. Still, to think that Naruto's clan was able to survive in a village of its own and grow so powerful that other villages felt threatened was something else. He may not know much about the clan, but at this moment, decided that the Uzumaki were worthy of respect. So you're not clanless, Sasuke remarked, with a small smirk, eyes firmly at the blonde. No, Naruto said, feeling threatened already? The blonde asked with a raised brow. Sasuke scoffed, by who? There are just the two of you. You're far away from threatening the Uchiha. Something clicked in Sasuke's mind. Is this is why you wish for the clan to be restored? Yes, Kashina said with a nod. I still believe that there might be survivors out there. Hopefully, when Naru-chan grows up he will find them, right, Naru-chan? It was a conversation they once held, and he had promised to bring the family back together. Naruto knew that his mother has other reasons for wanting the clan to be restored. He could make a few guesses. But it didn't matter because he would do anything to make his mother was happy. Of course mother. The Uzumaki clan will be restored to its former glory, Naruto said, looking straight at his mother. Uncharacteristically, he wore a rather serious expression. It was a bit out of character because he always preferred a smile when addressing his mother. Kashina merely smiled at her son, before looking back at Fugaku who was continuing from where he had left off. You do know the political consequences for this, how it will affect, young Naruto. Kashina nodded. The Sandame explained everything to me. In fact, it was his idea. Fugaku noted that Naruto hadn't smiled when Kashina said those words. The Uchiha head smiled inwardly. He really wished the boy was his son. Really, he must know the Sandame's motives for proposing such an idea, Fugaku thought. Naruto had no attachment to Konoha other than his mother. If something were to happen to the woman, the blonde would leave the village. No doubt about that. He reasoned the Sandame realized the only way to tie down both mother and son was to give something the mother wanted. Naturally, Naruto would follow his mother's lead, and judging by the look on the blonde's face, Fugaku could say it was going to work. What a sly old man the Sandame was. Kashina probably accepted it because she believed it would create a family for Naruto, give him a healthy environment. Fugaku didn't believe for a second that Kashina wasn't aware that the Sandame had other motives. Still, Naruto read underneath the underneath quite well for his age. Fugaku suppressed the urge to laugh because he knew that even Naruto twisted the third's hand by using his love for him to get what he wanted. The two obviously cared for each other, but were not above manipulating each other. It was a rather unique situation. I see, Fugaku said. If there is anything you need, talk to me. Mito was an Uzumaki, since no one is here to claim the Senju compound. I figure you may be in Po's position to inherit everything. Naturally, you will be faced with opposition the Uchiha head rose from his head. Itachi, come to the police force HQ when you're done, that said, the man disappeared. Hi, father, the Uchiha prodigy said monotonously. Naruto gave the Uchiha a glance, but said nothing. The rest of the dinner went along silently well. A week later, Kashina always enjoyed the sweet moments she spent with her son, especially when it was like this, enjoying a meal in their house. Soon to be ex house. She liked the Uchihas, they were family, but this was real family. The only part of the family that was missing was Minato. He wasn't here with them. How she wished he could be here for them, give them one of his stupid smiles. For so often Kashina has allowed her loss to get the best of her, she has allowed it to get a hold of her emotions and lead her into a fit of tears. It shouldn't be like that. 
It was even more troubling when she had to rely on her Naruto for comfort. It bothered her that he had stopped crying just to be strong for her. She hated her weakness. Naruto has always been strong. It reminded her of when she was younger. She was always strong, always dealing with her problems head on. She smacked any problem she faced to a pulp. But what had become of her? Makoto was right, she wasn't like her old self. She should be the one comforting Naruto, not the other way around. Still, Kashina was proud that she had a son so strong mentally. He didn't allow for anyone to push him around. Kashina smiled sadly, looking over the table, where Naruto was seated, enjoying his dinner. She looked up as his eyes met with hers. He gave her a curious glance. His lips parted as if he wanted to say something, but he shut them. Kashina assumed the curious gaze was summoned because of her sad smile. Such a sweet child, always worried about his mother. I'm sorry, Naruto. I haven't been the best of mothers. It is a little embarrassing to think that I have to cuddle up with my seven-year-old son in my moments of weakness. Kashina's sad smile turned into a nervous one. She complimented it with a nervous chuckle. If she hadn't been eating, she would have scratched the back of her head. Naruto shook his head, a bit firmly. You have been the best mother. I couldn't ask for more in what you have given me. His response was just as firm as the shaking of his head. You wouldn't ask even if there was something you needed, Naruto, Kashina said, her smile all sad again. Naruto didn't refute that, he knew she was right. Thank you for speaking to Makoto, and thank you for being such a wonderful son. Naruto smiled at his mother, eyes brightened a bit, his tone laced with some of happiness, I do what I can, he said before adding. But it wasn't my idea to speak to Makoto. It was Itachi's. Kashina didn't find that surprising. Not the least. I guess I will thank him as well. But it is your thought that counts the most. Honestly, you act like the adult sometimes. I should have been the one comforting you when you were crying. It is not a sign of weakness, mother. You have always protected me from the villagers who tried something on me. You have been a mother, my protector. The battle against the villagers is one I couldn't win, but you were strong for me when I couldn't do anything, Naruto said, with a small smile. I don't know what it feels like, but you lost someone who became your friend when you were still at the academy. You lost a part of you. I can't replace that. Being there for you as you have been for me is what I can do. Our bond only grows stronger when we rely on each. How far her child has grown. Kashina wished Minato was here. But that was just a wish. This was the reality. It was just the two of them. Regardless, the day you feel like crying, no matter how old you're, come to me. As your mother, I will comfort you, Kashina said in a motherly tone. Naruto nodded with a warm smile that was only reserved for his mother. I will remember that, he said. If you keep like this, you will make a girl happy one day, Kashina said, smiling as she did. I wish you were like this with Ino-chan as well. Naruto suppressed the urge to frown. He didn't think about girls. Showing a bit of his warmer side to Ino was something he wasn't willing to do. He wasn't an emotionless zombie. He just felt only his mother deserved his kindness. Then again, Ino has been always there. Even now at the academy. That was the thought that wanted him to frown. If his reasoning was that only his mother deserved his warmer smile, then at least Ino deserved something as well. He may have been the one to be bailing her out on a regular basis, but then in her own way, she was always been supportive. Though he may never admit it to her, she was one of those people who helped him keep his faith and hope in humans being capable doing what was right being able to change and do things without expecting something in return. She forces me into talking more often than I like, Naruto said of Ino. Kashina actually smiled at this. That is more like Ino, she said. I might even encourage her to drag you out for something to eat like she did last time. You wouldn't do that, would you? Ino is a smart girl, but when it was just the two of us eating, I regretted agreeing to go with her in the first place. I don't want to go through that hell again. Kashina merely chuckled and waved off her son. At least she can force you to do what you don't want. Regardless, it's good for you and I am really happy that you can hang out with someone your age and just talk about random stuff. I am really happy. Naruto had to contain himself from frowning. He just nodded with a smile, a small smile. To keep himself from being a two-faced hypocrite, he had to try. He told Tamari about working around their issue. Try to get used to it. They were still young and would eventually grow familiar with each other. Damn his mouth. He had to once again apply those words. A few nights later. To think that things would come to this. Itachi shook his head. 
It had to be done, he told himself. He had listened well to Naruto's thoughts. The blonde was willing to do anything to protect that which he loved the most, anything. He had told himself that there was nothing wrong with it. Naruto had spoken with conviction and Itachi had no doubt the blonde would follow up to that conviction. He also knew that Naruto would understand his situation. For this reason, Itachi stood atop of Naruto's house in the middle of the night with the blonde beside him. So nothing has solved the matter, Naruto said, in a seated position, his legs folded, head cocked to the side, not looking at anything in particular, but at the empty space ahead of him. Itachi shook his head. My mission to Kiri was to prove whether it was indeed true that the Yandaimi Mizukage was being manipulated by the Sharingan. That proved to be true, and it was the masked man doing it. The Uchiha paused for a moment, studying the blonde, who was now looking at him with an expressionless mask. I see, was all Naruto said. The revelation did no good with the elders. They believed that the Uchiha were behind it, and in turn my clan decided to push the coup d'etat ahead of schedule. My father would have ultimately used you, technically the Kayubi to gain more power in his fight, Itachi said. Danzo ordered me to rid of the clan before they initiate their plan. If the coup d'etat were to occur, with the Kayubi likely to be released it would further make me miserable and likely put my mother in danger, Naruto said. I assume the Sandame isn't aware of this. Itachi shook his head. He still believes they can talk things out, he said. He then walked up to Naruto, kneeled before the blonde, his expression a number of emotions. I can't kill Sasuke. I can't do it. Please Naruto, watch over him for me. I know this will deal a major blow on his mind. I need you to take care of him. Itachi was pleading, almost begging. The request did nothing but cause Naruto to frown. I guess I owe you that much. But if he becomes a problem to my mother, I will deal with him painfully. If he does anything that will risk her safety, I will kill him with my own hands. Itachi just nodded. That was the best he could get out of Naruto. But just to be safe, he would speak to the Sandame after the mission. Why kill everyone though? Danzo believes it is necessary, or else they will revolt at a later stage. Naruto frowned. Itachi, your objective is to stop a coup d'etat from occurring. There are innocent families and children who know nothing about the coup. Are you going to kill them too? If yes, better just warn me when the coup will occur so I can leave this village with my mother so we don't get caught up. Itachi didn't let his emotions show. If I don't do it, Danzo will. I would rather they die honorably by my blade. Naruto stood up, if you kill everyone, Sasuke will lose it. He will become something uncontrollable and I will kill him before the year ends. You know how gullible he is. My mother will be affected by Makoto's death as well. She can't afford to lose a true friend, he turned away from the Uchiha. My mother will be left broken. Should that happen, I will kill Sasuke and hunt you for the rest of your life. I don't particularly care for them, but Itachi, think about what you're doing carefully. You care for Konoha and Sasuke. Killing everything will lead to Sasuke's death. You know I will kill him if my mother is wounded. I imagine for you to avoid that, you'd have to kill me as well. But my death will mean the release of the Kayubi. Ultimately that will see Konoha seeing another rampage. Itachi narrowed his eyes, what are you saying? I understand that you want to protect Konoha. Killing only those who can harm Konoha is the best choice for Konoha, Sasuke and me. Look at it, you avoid a coup de tart, and your mother gets to rebuild the clan anew, while being there for Sasuke to ensure that he doesn't fall into the wrong path. I'm sure you can save your people from Danzo. If you don't want that, we have a problem because I must also protect what I love. Your options are simple. Kill only those who are threatening Konoha, and we will get along kill everyone else, and leave Sasuke, which in turn will hurt my mother. In response, I will hurt you by killing Sasuke and hunt you down. To avoid that happening, you'd have to kill me as well. However, I will not stand for that to happen. I will even go as far as to let the Kayubi out to protect myself. Your mother will still be in danger if you do that, Itachi pointed out. Naruto shook his head. My mother can restrain the Kayubi. In its current form, it wouldn't be difficult. Mind you, she once was a former host, and she is a seal master. Her clan developed biju sealing techniques. Itachi frowned knowing that Naruto was right. The choice is yours, Itachi, that said, Naruto started to walk away. Even with my mother alive, will you look after Sasuke? Take him as your brother? Itachi called out, considering his options. Not for a second did he doubt Naruto's words. 
The blonde was willing to do anything possible and impossible to protect what he loved the most. He was willing to do that as well. So he could understand. With your mother alive, my mother will not suffer. I can manage your foolish brother. I owe it to you at least for everything you've done for me. The world was a funny place. Today you were revered as a hero and tomorrow the very same people spoke your name as if it were a curse. The same people who sang praises to you in their dreams now wished for the worst to happen to you. Naruto was almost amused by the situation in Konoha. The beloved Uchiha Itachi, a prodigy, the light of the famed clan, which had become an object of resentment from the hating minds of Konoha's villagers, had become one of the villagers' traitorous. Or so their ignorance led them to call him. Uchiha Itachi was now being spoken in the same sentence as that amoral Orochimaru. When they sent curses to the snake, they sent some to Itachi. He had betrayed them and turned into a diabolical power-hungry monster who would slaughter his own clansmen. At least that is what Konoha believed. It was ironic that the so-called light turned out to the dark side, as the villagers now believed. Itachi was supposed to be the savior of the Uchiha. Hell some were even tipping him for the mantle of Hokage once he grew old enough. Those dreams were crushed in just one night of bloodshed. The ridiculous thing that had amused Naruto was a reaction from Konoha's people to the tragedy that had fallen to the Uchiha clan. They cried for the Uchiha as if they had been on laughing terms with them. Uchiha Itachi was hated. They despised him for killing members of the Uchiha clan. They spoke so many curses about his name, and it had yet to be 24 hours after the killings took place. It was only the afternoon, with the villagers having discovered the tragedy early in the morning. Naruto had heard many people saying so many things. It made him laugh. In the inside of course. Stones would be thrown at him if he suddenly started to laugh at this situation. A number of the Uchiha clan members had been murdered in cold blood. There was nothing funny about that. Yes, there was indeed nothing funny about it. Naruto may not care, but it wasn't funny. It was sad really. Yet, he could not sympathize with them. The second the situation was highly amusing. It wasn't the killings themselves that were amusing. He had yet to lose himself, or pass the barrier of insanity to be laughing at the deaths of other people. Yes, he may not care, he may not have offered nay sympathies, but he was still a person. What amused Naruto was the reaction of the villagers in relation to him. The ignorant fools suspected had the Uchiha clan for the Kayubi rampage. They had gone as far as to show blatant distrust to the clan. They showed no love to it. It wasn't hidden to anyone. It was a reason that he could get along with the clan. Both were seen as reasons for the rampage by the biju sealed within him. The villagers had cried for the Uchiha. They acted like they had cared all along. Yes, they demanded for Itachi to be hunted down for murdering members of their most powerful clan. They cursed his name while crying tears for the clan. Tears. Tears of sadness for crying out loud. Was it just him who found it amusing, after everything Konoha had put the clan through? It was like if he suddenly died and they started crying for him, not of happiness but of sadness that he had died. Sad that their beloved Uzumaki was dead. Ridiculous. It was beyond the realm of possibilities, yet something akin to it had occurred. Of course Naruto didn't delude himself to even think that they would cry for him if he died. Hell no. They would laugh and rejoice Monday to Friday. Hell, they would even honor the day he dies as the day of freedom. Yup, Naruto could really see that happening. Naruto shook his head, sitting inside the Sandame's office. Perhaps he was losing it. He really needed to get in touch with his inner self and revaluate his thoughts a bit more if he wanted to appear sane. He had appeared insane about an hour ago. It was the reason he was even here in this office with the Sandame staring at him with a concerned look. Worried old man he was. Jiraiya appeared worried as well. Naruto didn't get what they were so worried about. He saw nothing unnatural in his actions earlier. It had been perfectly normal for him to act as he did. Again, perhaps he was losing it. What had happened was that while the villagers cursed Itachi and consoled the remaining members of the Uchiha clan, they had taken their knives and glared at him. They blamed him. They freaking blamed him for Itachi's actions. They thought he was the one who had manipulated the Uchiha. He was a demon after all. He had corrupted their prodigy. Him. He had done it. Uzumaki Naruto, a seven-year-old had manipulated a Mangekio Sharingan wielder, an Anbu captain. And they were dead serious about it. Itachi had been friends with him. They knew. 
since they couldn't understand it, their logical conclusion was that the big old demon was manipulating the Uchiha. If not, his vile nature had driven him insane. Yes, that explained why he would suddenly do something so outrageous. Hell, there was even a rumor flying around that the vile demon had manipulated Itachi to do what he did as revenge to the clan for manipulating it seven years ago. That was crazy. These people were not rational at all. What was Naruto's reaction when he was confronted with this? He had laughed. Not just any laughter. A full-blown laughter. He'd rolled on the ground clutching his stomach as he laughed. He had even let loose of a few tears as he laughed. It had been a disturbing sight, as he heard someone whisper. His laughter hadn't been a happy one though. No, it was a disturbing laughter that would make Orochimaru wipe off a tear on his left eye. Perhaps he really was losing it, but he couldn't help himself. Their stupidity, blatant ignorance and foolishness had just reached a new low. How wrong could they be? He was to blame for everything. Everything. Next up, the rain won't be coming and they were going to blame him for it. The fools. He was the one who'd talked Itachi out of killing everyone. If it hadn't been for him, there would be no clan to speak of. But he had done it once again. Uzumaki Naruto had saved the day, yet they still blamed him for the bad. At least something good came out of all these. The Uchiha clan would be trusted once more. Yes, they would be. If Itachi had known all along that it would take for his clan to be trusted again was for such killings to occur, what would have done? Probably nothing. Itachi's goal wasn't to save the clan, but Konoha. Regardless, he would be smiling wherever he was. That thought made Naruto frown and he wanted to yell, cursed bastard. While Itachi made his dream come true, and his clan was becoming loved once again, his existence had taken another knock on the ground. This had done nothing but put deep holes in his hopes. Filthy humans. He was really growing to dislike the creatures that crawled inside this village. Perhaps they were not even human to begin with. Yes, Naruto wouldn't deny that possibility if someone said it may be true. How he wished there was someone who had the same thoughts as him. If things continued like this, he was going to lose it. What of his mother? Just the thought of his beloved mother, Naruto beat down all his disturbing thoughts. He couldn't afford to have his mother worried for him. She had to worry about herself. So lost in his thoughts, Naruto hadn't even realized the Sandane was talking to him. By now, the old man was waving his right hand in front of his face with a frown, matched by Jiraiya. Naruto blinked. Four times. You said something? Naruto said to the Sandame. The old man cringed at the lack of emotion on the blonde's tone. It was way sharper than usual. Not a good sign. Perhaps Naruto needed to be taken to Inoichi just to check his mental stability. That laughter hadn't been normal at all. If anything, the Sandame had really thought Naruto had lost it. Well, he couldn't fault the boy. He had been bottling up things for too long. Still that reaction wasn't going to make him sleep good at night. He doubted he would even sleep at all. He had to take measures or else Naruto was going to be insane soon enough. That laughter had just reminded him of Orochimaru. His traitorous beloved student. Naruto was his student as well. He was very smart and learned fast. He just lacked the people to call him a genius. Sasuke was called a genius. Yet he was nowhere close to the blonde when it came to intelligence. Why did you laugh Naruto? Here is an asked, his tone calm, with some emotions in it. Why indeed, Naruto said, tilting his head to the right. He rested it on his right palm. He knew the answer, just taking his sweet time. I guess I found the situation to be hilarious. It wasn't funny, Naruto, the Sandame said, it came a bit hard than he intended. Fortunately, Naruto didn't seem to have noticed it, or he just ignored it. The Sandame couldn't really tell. Really? Naruto gave the old man a look before adding. They blame me for Minato's death. They said I killed him. Mind you, I was just a couple of hours old or even less when he died. Then they continued to call me a demon. Me, the son of their beloved hero. Next up, they blame me for Itachi's actions. Full-grown men and women, glaring down at a seven-year-old, accusing him of manipulating a prodigy, an Anbu captain. How is that not funny? Jiraiya swallowed. Naruto was way too calm. His tone was quiet and there was some nonchalance in it. It was just wrong. No one should be this clam and nonchalant about this issue in that manner. No one. Even he wouldn't be calm. He could question the villagers' behavior and their intelligence, but Naruto's reaction was just crazy. 
He could have understood it if the blonde had insulted or lunged at the villagers. Even if he killed someone in the process, Jiraiya would have understood. And he was sure even the Sandame would have understood that it was inevitable. But to laugh like a madman? No one had expected it. Even the villagers had been left bewildered. Some of them had even turned away and walked away. That laughter sent chills to anyone who could think logically. Had Naruto's mental barriers finally broken? Jiraiya crushed that probability. No, not Minato's son. We have a serious mess to deal with. When other villages hear of this, they will be tempted to act, the third Hokage said to Jiraiya, ignoring Naruto's question. You agree with me, Jiraiya, when I say even so, this is way more important for us. Jiraiya nodded. The Anbu can deal with that, and your advisors as well as clan heads can restore calm to the villagers. We don't want them burning Minato's house or getting any other funny ideas. It will be difficult though, the Sandame sighed tiredly and looked at Naruto carefully. Naruto, he took a pause there, watching the blonde carefully, are you really okay? I'm fine, Naruto said, with a wave of his left hand. Or, are you asking me if I've lost it? The Sandame breathed in slowly and then breathed out. His eyes shut for a moment before responding, yes, he said. I'm still sane, and the Kayubi has not tainted me, Naruto said, his tone still sharp. However, I don't see humans down there. There is only trash. I wonder, would Minato still sacrifice me even if he knew this would happen? Both Jiraiya and the Sandame tensed. Naruto chuckled, it was a bitter chuckle. Yes, he would do it again, and again, and again. Right until there is no life in me. What are we going to do sensei? Jiraiya asked, his expression deadly serious. I'm willing to take them out of the village to keep them safe. He is not going to last if things continue like this. Naruto looked at Jiraiya. Oh, you watched Orochimaru lose his mind. You don't want to watch me fall into that line as well. How sweet. Perhaps mother was right when she said that despite your glaring failures, you are a kind person, the blonde said. But have no worries. It would take my mother's death for me to lose my mind. The fact that Naruto had said those words was even more disturbing. The Sandame opened his left bottom drawer behind his desk, and took out a bottle. This was really needed. He opened it and halved its contents. Hiruzen looked at Naruto once more. They needed to move away from this subject. He would consider Jiraiya's option if things don't change. As loath as he may to admit, things wouldn't change anytime soon. And he needed Naruto to be safe. Naruto, did Itachi say anything to you? Did you talk to him yesterday? No, Naruto lied so simply. He knew the Sandame wanted to know if the Uchiha had told him about what he was going to do. The Sandame knew Itachi would tell him. The man knew he was alike to the Uchiha in some ways. But if the old man was going to put on an act and pretend as if he was not sure about it, then Naruto was going to keep his mouth shut. Oh, the Sandame said. Sasuke-kun is going to need a friend. Can I trust you to be there for him? I don't know if his mother will be enough to keep him from falling. Naruto merely nodded. He closed his eyes for a moment. At least the Uchiha has secured its future. Konoha will no longer distrust them and in turn, the clan will grow those strings that were cut off and attach itself to the village once more. The dead can thank Uzumaki Naruto again. The Sandame lit his pipe, while Jiraiya finished the Sandame's sake. That had been the bitter truth. Neither Jiraiya nor the Sandame were willing to say it out, but it was the truth. How it sickened Jiraiya. I still can't believe that they would blame you though, Jiraiya said. I mean, even if I was high, I wouldn't go that far. They're looking for something to blame. Itachi was a kind person to them. He was the only Uchiha who didn't act like an Uchiha. He was their rising star. In just one night, everything changes, Naruto said to Jiraiya, without looking at him. Their damaged brains can't understand why Itachi would act like that. Deep within, they want to believe that someone had manipulated him. Still, it doesn't give them the right to act the way they did to you. It's not fair, the Sandame said, his tone laced with some disappointment. Life has never been fair to me, Naruto said with a shrug. Before anything could be further said, Kakashi appeared in the office in a swirl of leaves. The Janin had left the village in the middle of the night with a number of Anbu after the reality in the Uchiha clan compound had been discovered. Going by the books, the Sandame sent Anbu after Itachi. He had already spoken to the Uchiha by then, and knew the poor soul would be safe. 
Sending his anbu was just a formality and just to avoid any suspicions of foul play. It would be disastrous if it came out that Itachi had been ordered to do what he did. The village's image would be shattered with the revelation. Despite the janin being masked, the sandame could very well see that Kakashi was really worn out. He must have been running for hours, he thought mildly. He felt bad for sending the man on a goose chase. He knew they wouldn't catch Itachi. But it had to be done. You really look worn out Kakashi, the third said. Judging by your appearance, I can say you didn't succeed. Kakashi nodded. We covered most ground but couldn't find him. Even when we tried breaking formation to move one by one to cover more ground, we still didn't find him. But I still believe he is still in the fire country. Right he was. Itachi was still in the fire country. Naturally, everyone would suspect that Itachi had committed treason and run off, far away from the fire borders. The Uchiha had anticipated that and didn't move far away. The plan was to stay in one safe place and move when it was safer. That was what the teenager had told him when he had offered to give him a head start. I'm sure you tried your best, the Sandame said. Go rest, I will leave this to the hunter Nens. By end today, Itachi will be in our bingo books as an S-ranked criminal. Kakashi nodded, but didn't leave. Even though he was a jutsu away from draining his last bit of chakra, he still had to know how Naruto was doing. He would even fall smiling if his body gave up while trying to ask a question. That is how much he cared for the blonde. How are you taking this, Naruto? Itachi was your friend, teacher as well, Kakashi said in a tired voice. The Uchiha had even trained Naruto more than he did, despite the fact that the teenager was always busy with Anbu and military police force matters. As I can, Naruto simply said. He was saved from explaining things further when his mother literally broke the Sandame's door as he marched into the office. The woman rushed towards her son and picked him from the chair like a baby. She put him down as she got to her knees. She had heard what had happened. And the moment she did, she'd rushed over here. Kashina engulfed Naruto into a tight motherly hug. Naruto did what he could, hug his mother back. Kashina had tears on her cheeks. She was crying as she held him. Naruto could feel it. I'm glad you're okay, she said softly. Naruto didn't say anything. He closed his eyes. It was okay to put on a sad smile. As long as it was on his mother's back. She wouldn't have to worry about anything because she couldn't see it. In a rare moment, Naruto's mask slipped in his mother's embrace. I'm fine mother, Naruto finally said, his tone quiet, yet lacking the usual emotion it carried when his mother was involved. Kakashi walked up to Jiraiya, did I miss something? He whispered. Jiraiya nodded and explained what had happened. Kakashi was disturbed, angry even, livid if we're just throwing words. He was getting enough of the villagers' tendencies. Their actions sickened him. If they drive Naruto to insanity, Kami-sama could forgive him. He would end up following Itachi in the bingo book. Giving one last look to mother and son, Kakashi disappeared before his thoughts became a reality. Sleep would do it this time. After a couple of moments, Kashina let go off Naruto and stood up. She didn't let him away though. No, she still had her hands on his shoulders, keeping him in front of her. He heated glare fell on the third. Here is an, what are we going to do about this? Formalities be damned, my son can no longer take this crap. I cannot watch this continue to happen, here is an. Kashina's tone was way sharper. Unlike her usual loud threatening self, it was calm, yet so sharp. It made the third tense as he chose his words carefully. The woman was on a brink. Saying anything that wouldn't make her happy would probably make her attack him or the villagers. In this stage, the Sandame thought Naruto would join as well. I know, Kashina, the third said, his expression showing his old age. Once Makoto-chan recovers from the hospital and make preparations for the memorial, you will go to Sanagakir for a week or two while I settle things here. If by then your return is not welcomed, you will leave the village with Jiraiya. I can cover you for four years at most, but by then, you will have to return. Kashina nodded. Let's go home, Naruto, she didn't say a word to Jiraiya or anything to the Sandame. Simply took her son and left. The Sandame leaned back to his chair. You get to make things right, Jiraiya. Do not waste this chance. I won't sensei, Jiraiya said with a firm nod. This will be good for Naruto. Why did you say they will only leave with me if things haven't changed after they return from Sanagakir? You know there won't be any changes. While they are with you, they won't get the chance to visit Suna. They will have to stay hidden. 
Naruto is still Minato's son. Some people don't need proof to attack. A mere look and they will be convinced. This time I've set up, will allow Naruto and Kashina to further acquaint themselves with the Subaku family. I still believe there is a future there, the aged professor said. Jiraiya nodded. He didn't disagree with that. I'm going to get something to drink. If I stay here any longer, Danzo may show up. Knowing him, he will say something about Naruto that will tempt me to kill him. That said Jiraiya disappeared in a puff of smoke. Ah, speak of the devil. Here is and we have to talk, Danzo said as he entered the office with his two supporters, Kaharu and Homura. There is nothing to talk about, here is and said sternly. I'm you have heard about Naruto-kun and have come here to demand that he be brought to your care. The answer is still no. Here is an, you and I know very well that the boy is unstable. That behavior earlier clearly shows that, Kaharu said. He needs to be trained to control his emotions. What if he had lost himself and released the Kayubi? Do you want to see this village destroyed? The Sandame ignored Kaharu. Danzo, you have plotted behind my back for the last time. I've allowed you to do as you please for long enough. One more move, and I will have you executed for treason. I know both of you were on it as well. Itachi told me. He also told me that you had ordered for the entire clan to be erased. What were you thinking? The Sandame shouted, banging his hand on the table, forgetting about a thing called secrecy. The third calmed himself. Naruto will be leaving Konoha for a while with Jiraiya. You have nothing to worry about. Now, get out of my office, I want to do my job. You can't be serious, here is an. The boy needs Danzo. Kaharu shouted. Kaharu, you went behind my back when you ordered for the Uchiha massacre. Luckily, Itachi chose to kill those who knew of the coup. We still have a clan now. The Sharingan won't be extinct, the Sandame said lowly. You're not Hokage. You have no power ordering my shinobi. If I ever hear you are doing it again, I will have you locked up in a cell for usurping my authority. I assure of that. Danzo, if you make a move towards Naruto, I will make you regret it. The Sandame said. Anbu, escort my advisors out of the Hokage Tower. They must never set foot until I say otherwise, and get me someone to fix my door. Konoha Hospital. Naruto wandered along the busy hospital with his mother steadily on his right hand. Both were heading towards Makoto's room. Not so surprisingly, the nurse didn't want to tell them where Makoto rested. His mother had turned on the menace to get what she wanted. Whilst his mother threatened to rip the woman apart, Naruto had simply watched it all with a look of nonchalant. After what had just happened today, he could care less if his mother killed someone. In the days of the past, he was willing to stop her from killing the foolish villagers, but now he wasn't going to do any of that. He hadn't stopped her back then because he cared. No, he just didn't like his mother dirtying her hands by killing filth. But now he could say he wasn't worried about that. If she killed one of them, it was a happy day for him. Konoha would have one more filth removed. He reasoned letting them die was a service to Konoha. These people were vile creatures. They polluted the village with a spirit of ignorance, hatred and foolishness. Their deaths would clean Konoha and make it a bit bearable for him and his mother. How could he complain over that? It is getting difficult to deal with them, huh? Kashina said to Naruto. She was also at her limit. She wasn't preaching the gospel at this time. Things needed to be revaluated before she could preach again. At this stage, she was most concerned about Naruto's mental health above all things. Honestly, Kashina wasn't concerned about the state of the village. She was worried about her son and her friend. Above all things, Naruto stood. What would Minato do if he were here? Would things even be like this if he was alive? Perhaps not. Perhaps Naruto would still be hated while they hailed their Yandaimi Hokage, their greatest hero. Kashina frowned at the thought. If only Minato had listened to her when she said it was better she resealed the Kayubi inside of her. Naruto would have been living a normal life. She could be hated for all she cared, but as long as Naruto was able to live normally, she would have all reasons to smile. Now, she wasn't a matter. Her son was the menace to this village, or so the villagers believed. How it infuriated her. Still, she wasn't willing to give this village the middle finger. Mito had said the only way to conquer hatred was through love. She wasn't about to open her heart for this village to stab it all up. No, she believed as long as she continued to love her son and those close to her, she would rise above this hatred. They'd survived so far and were actually doing well. Naruto had been doing at the academy. He was finally adapting. 
He had learned to ignore the villagers while focusing on the positives of this life. And this had to happen to screw it all up. Yes, it is, Naruto said, in agreement with his mother. But we survived the first wave. We will continue to survive even this one. As long as we continue to have each other. Kashina smiled, nodding as they rounded up on a corner. It is puzzling how things can change overnight. Everything changes overnight. That horrible night you were excited about giving birth, but that turned out to be a nightmare. After birth, I had explosives tags all over me, and you had to go through the extraction of the Kayubi, which nearly cost you your life, Naruto said quietly, a bit sad. It was okay to show emotions, he was in the presence of his mother. Regardless of all these things happening, as long as I have you, I will always look forward to tomorrow. Once more again, Kashina smiled warmly at her son. At least he was back to his usual self. That incident had really shaken her. But she was happy that Naruto was back at being Naruto again. No lasting damage was done. Naturally, if there had been damage she would have hunted down those who caused it and ripped their flesh apart with her chakra chains. As long as we have each other, Kashina muttered. But when you grow up into a handsome man, you're going to leave your poor mother alone and run away with a girl. Despite saying so, Kashina didn't see that happening. She wanted for it to happen. But Naruto was too clingy to leave her. Perhaps when he does grow things will change. It had to. For his own happiness. Why do you think I would leave you mother? Besides, at this age, do you think I should be hearing about running off with some girl? I don't even get that kind of love, Naruto said, giving his mother a sighted look. Kashina shrugged. Though I hate to admit it, you don't talk like a seven-year-old, Naruto. You're all grown up while trapped in a little body. But I'm not saying you must start reading those perverted books your teachers read. I swear if I find you reading those things. Naruto gulped, nodded all too quickly. He may not have had the thought to read to those books, but if his mother said not to, he was going to nod as if he had the plan to read them. The books he read were Fuenjutsu books and some elemental manipulation. He didn't have time for smut. I won't go that far mother, Naruto said, as honestly as he could. I know you won't, Kashina said with a smile. He was all too focused on strengthening himself to be dragged into other things that could corrupt him. And he was too smart to be tricked into reading those books. Nothing further was said as the two finally made it to Makoto's room. The black-haired was lying on her back, covered with white sheets, wide awake. Her broken son sitting just beside her, staring into nothing in particular with a dark look on his face. A look that shouldn't be on a seven-year-old. Naruto shouldn't be the one to say. Not after how he scared the villagers. The atmosphere was just gloomy. It was sad, really. Sasuke was once a happy child. It was often amusing to Kashina when she used to see him pout when his older brother would say he couldn't train with him. Or when he looked embarrassed when his mother treated him like the little boy he was in front of other people. What had happened to that happy Sasuke? He looked emotionally dead. From what she had heard, he had yet to say a word to anyone. He refused to speak to the Anbu, or anyone for that matter. His mother hadn't been strong enough to say anything. Both were just allowing their gloomy thoughts to consume them. In Sasuke's case, dark thoughts. Very, very dark thoughts. If one entered the young Uchiha's mind, they would run away away fast without turning back. Despite this, Kashina smiled and looked at her friend. She walked over and hugged the older woman, smiling sadly. I'm so happy that you're okay. I don't know what I would have done if you died too, the Uzumaki woman said all too honestly. Upon hearing this, Naruto gave himself a pat on the back. Uzumaki Naruto had saved the day once more again. He had done right ensuring that other members of the Uchiha clan lived. His threat had been no means a bluff. He had been dead serious. And now it pleased him to know that his forcefulness had brought upon this result. Uzumaki Kashina wasn't lost. She still had a friend. The two women continued to talk while Naruto kept his silence. It was better to allow he adults do their talking. Besides, Makoto needed a friend right now. She needed someone to comfort her. Yes, he was that considerate, to Makoto at least. Can you take Sasuke with you? I was told he hasn't eaten anything all day, and he can't stay here all night. He needs to rest, Makoto said to Kashina after the Uzumaki had said her goodbyes. Sure, Kashina said. You once took care of my Naruto. Now it's my turn to look after your Sasuke, she added all too happily. Sasuke-kun, Kashina called warmly to the boy, but she was ignored. Sasuke-kun? 
Sasuke? The Uchiha didn't respond. It didn't seem like he had even registered any of her words. He merely stayed frozen, staring into the empty space with a dark look. Makoto frowned, but said nothing, allowing Kashina to handle it. She was too emotionally tired to be stressing out now. Kashina touched Sasuke's right shoulder, trying to get his attention. Sasuke-kun? She flinched when the boy gave her a sharp look. It was as if he just said, what, in cold words. You need to test. Come with me. Naruto frowned. Any more of this and he would snap the Uchiha's fingers to get him to behave properly when his mother was talking to him. Before his mother could flinch again, Naruto walked over to the boy. He did a quick chop at the back of his head and the Uchiha fell down. He didn't even attempt to catch the boy. He wasn't that considerate to a person who treated his mother in such fashion. Kashina merely shook her head at this, but she said nothing. She picked up the unconscious boy and placed him on her back before Naruto decided to drag him to their house by his feet. Oh, Kashina had no doubt Naruto would go that far. Kashina, Makoto started quietly. Can I talk to Naruto for a moment? The Uzumaki looked at Naruto before nodding. Just don't take too long, she said leaving the room. Come closer, Naruto, Makoto said. Naruto did as told, and the woman held out her left hand. Naruto took it with his right. Thank you, Naruto. Naruto raised a curious brow at her thanks. He presumed Itachi told her the truth. But there was nothing to thank him for. He said what he said for his own selfish reason. What did I do to be thanked? Naruto still asked the question, despite his flow of thoughts. You saved my life and my clan. Sasuke will still grow up with a mother because of you. I will forever be grateful. If I had a daughter, I would give her to you. Makoto chuckled knowing Naruto wouldn't accept that offer. But I don't. I can only say thank you. If there is anything you want, anything at all, come to me. I owe you my life so that will be the least I can do. Naruto shook his head. You know you don't need to thank me, Makoto-san. I, he was cut off. My husband is dead. I'm widowed. Call me Makoto, she said, sadness in her tone. I know why you did it. And I know things have turned worse for you. Regardless of your reasons, I was saved because of you. Fugaku was really shocked when he heard it. He said if there had been a ritual to make you an Uchiha by blood, he would order me to do it. Makoto pulled Naruto closer, playing his right hand on her chest as she gave him a warm smile. No matter what people call you, don't listen to them. You, Uzumaki Naruto, are my hero. Naruto simply nodded in a speechless manner. Those were the words he never thought he would hear in his life. He'd heard her correctly. She called him her hero. He was in her heart. He, Uzumaki Naruto, was her hero. He had been recognized. The words may be coming from the mouth of the familiar Uchiha Makoto, but those were the words that came from the heart. Those last two words reached a part of his heart that he didn't know existed. The feeling he felt was so confusing that he walked away without another word. Kashina's house. Everything was back to normal again. Naruto was home, eating dinner with his beloved mother. Well, it wasn't that normal because there was someone else with them. A someone who was quiet as a mute. Kashina looked up at Naruto, I never asked. Do you like the idea of traveling the elemental nations along with Jiraiya? You two don't get well. So if you don't want him, we can leave with Kakashi. Naruto shook his head. Jiraiya is just fine, he said. The Sanin would do. Between him and Kakashi, the Toad Sage had more experience and was a lot more powerful. Besides that, Kakashi was not that suited for this task. You mean to say Jiraiya is more useful? Kashina said, that is what his words sounded like. Sometimes I don't know whether I should be proud or sad, she mumbled to herself. I mean that in a nice way, Naruto said. Jiraiya is a Sanin. His reputation succeeds that of Kakashi. With him around, we won't have many people bothering us, and given that Jiraiya spends his time outside the village, he obviously knows the outside better than Kakashi. That was reasonable enough. But Kashina knew there was more, and? Jiraiya is Konoha's main source of vital intel. This leads me to conclude that he has some sort of a spy network. While we are away, we can use his resources to find other Uzumaki who survived, Naruto explained. Kashina smiled, I like that idea, she said happily. All that happiness died when her eyes turned to Sasuke. He had yet to touch his food. He was just staring at it. She frowned, this was going to be difficult to deal with. Kashina moved closer to Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, eat up. 
If you don't eat up, you're just going to worry your mother. Please eat your food, Kashina said, in a warm, motherly tone. Sasuke ignored her. Sasuke-kun? He ignored her again. I know you're hurting, Sasuke. I understand, but you have to eat. Kashina tried to get his attention by placing her hand on his shoulder. But Sasuke batted it away, and snapped. You understand nothing. You don't get it. Don't pretend like you know what I'm feeling. He ushered a dark look at Kashina, his tone just chilling. And don't tell me what to do. You're not my mother. Naruto's look twisted and he got up from his chair. He grabbed Sasuke by the collar of his shirt, smiling at his mother warmly. Okaa-san, he said sweetly. Please let me worry about him. Just finish up. Oh, and whatever you hear, don't come, that said. Naruto, literally, dragged Sasuke towards the kitchen. You ungrateful little. He threw Sasuke at the kitchen unit. The Uchiha grunted as he hit the unit with his back. Naruto's right hand grabbed a frying pan, and bam. The thing hit Sasuke on his forehead, causing blood to leak out. We have been through worse than you, Uchiha. Naruto slammed his right foot on the Uchiha's chest, pressing him against the unit. Who do you think you're talking to? Look at me? Naruto pressed, earning a dark look from the Uchiha, but he just tossed it aside. The frying pan was still on his right hand. Talk to my mother like that again, and I will break your fingers, one by one. To demonstrate he was dead serious, he took Sasuke's left hand, bended one of the fingers with so much force that it nearly snapped. Grr. It was the third time Sasuke was letting out a pain sound. If you give her that look again, I will smack you with this thing again, Naruto said, glaring Uchiha. He let the boy go. Now, wipe that blood off your face and go apologize to my mother. I will be watching you. And eat your food or I will shove it down your throat. Naruto walked away, going back to the dinning table. He settled down on his chair and continued as if nothing had happened. Do you think Tsunade will try to take the Senju possessions away from us if she does return to Konoha? Kashina gave Naruto a look, but before she could say anything, Sasuke crawled back to the dinning table. I'm sorry, he nearly said and sat down to eat his food, but not before sending Naruto a glare. Kashina just smiled. At least he was eating, she thought. She knew quite well Naruto hit the poor boy. Looking back at her son, Kashina responded to his question. Legally, once we claim it, Tsunade won't have any right. She has abandoned her village long ago. She has no say, Kashina said with a shrug. Naruto nodded. At least in the Senju compound we can have lots of space and I won't have to breathe the same air as the villagers, he said, a bit satisfied with that. Well, technically. I know, Naruto said. We will get lots of money as well. It is a pity we can't spend it as we like in this village, the blonde sighed. Well, I see what I can get in Sanagakure and as we travel. Kashina nodded. She smiled, I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know when was the last time I walked away from this village walls freely. It will be good to get some fresh air. Yeah, Naruto frowned when he looked at Sasuke. Itachi had asked him to look after him. He should have said no. The spoiled brat was going to give him problems. We may have to take him with us, he added. Kashina actually nodded in agreement. He will need the time away as well. If is it clear his mind, he will have to get some fresh air, she said and looked at Naruto, unblinking. Please be nice, Naruto-kun. Sasuke is not like you. Naruto shrugged internally. At this stage, words won't do. Physical pain has to be inflicted for him to respond. Besides, do you think this world will wait for him to grow up? Sasuke only lost his father. Yet, he's acting like everything was taken away from him. Yup. They were talking as if the said Uchiha wasn't even in the room with them. Itachi was everything to him, Naruto. Sasuke adored his brother. After this, he has to be hurt, Kashina said. But Naruto wouldn't understand, so she didn't explain further. Seeing that the two had finished eating, Kashina spoke, Go wash your hands, you two. I will do the dishes. Naruto, you know what to do. The blonde nodded, come on, he said to Sasuke. The raven-haired just followed him in a quiet mode. Once everything was done, Naruto said goodnight to his mother and had Sasuke follow him to his room. Everything was already prepared. Both took off what needed to be taken off and went under the red sheets. This night is going to be long, Naruto thought, seeing that Sasuke was staring at the ceiling with that dark look of his. Sleep, Sasuke. You still have tomorrow to think. At this rate, you're going to cripple your mind, and you'll be prone to more outburst. 
Mind you, if those outburst happen in front of my mother, I will break you. Naruto turned to the other side. And you know I can do it, right? It took a few moments, but Sasuke shut his eyes. When it came to his mother, Naruto didn't joke around. Even in his state, Sasuke was able to understand that. His earlier beating had been proof of it. The following day, Senju compound. With recent events, the academy had been closed. The Sandame said it would be closed for at least two weeks. Naruto had no complaints. In fact, he couldn't have it any other way. If they suddenly decided that the academy wouldn't reopen until next year, he would gladly run around the village with a wide grin on his face, greeting everyone. Naturally, that was just wishful thinking. It would be a disaster for the academy to be closed for that long, and the Sandame wouldn't make such a decision. The civilians and shinobi parents wouldn't like it either. Naruto could foresee a strike if such a decision was made. Everything was slow around the village. But within a week, things would calm a bit. The slowness didn't mean there wasn't a buzz of activity inside the walls of the village. The slowness was caused by the abundance of activities that needed to be fulfilled. Itachi had almost pleaded with him to look after Sasuke, and he was going to do that, in the best way he could. He didn't care if he had to break the Uchiha's legs in the process. Itachi didn't define how he should look after his little brother, and the older brother must know that between Sasuke and his mother, Naruto would always choose Uzumaki Kashina. Makoto was only released this morning and as far as he knew, she was burdened with clan matters. Perhaps he should help her out. Surely there were going to be some paperwork needed to be filled, and the funeral arrangements for the slain clan members. The memorial service for everyone was to be held in in two days. It was an event that will surely have Konoha in full attendance. Naruto looked at Sasuke, his expression displaying no emotion as the cold eyes of the Uchiha stared back at him. They were in the training ground within the compound. He decided that since Sasuke wanted to release some pent-up stress, it was best to hit the training ground. He wasn't that much interested in dealing with the emotional problems with the boy. He just wanted him to loosen up so that he wasn't a bother to both their mothers. Makoto told him something no one has ever told him. She told him he was her hero. Her savior. In Naruto's book, the woman deserved some sort of special treatment and that meant looking out for her. Don't use ninjutsu, Naruto said, laying out the instructions. You can use kanai or shuriken, but no fireball. Do you understand those simple words Sasuke? HN, that was the response Naruto received from the young Uchiha. So tempting. Naruto was tempted to walk up to the Uchiha and smack him around. HN, wasn't a response. He wanted a clear answer not a mere grunt. He held himself though. Physical punishment had its own limits. There would be a time a beating wouldn't suffice. So it was best to give the beatings in a situation that was dire. Naruto wasn't allowed to continue with his thoughts as Sasuke darted towards him in fury. The blonde frowned. Sasuke wasn't thinking straight. He was just charging head on, and he didn't doubt the Uchiha would mistakenly kill someone if he fought someone weaker in this state of mind. As Sasuke threw punches at him, Naruto just dodged them, moving back slightly. When the Uchiha turned to kicks, he blocked them, keeping his gaze firmly into the eyes of the raven-haired. With each dodge and block, Sasuke was growing frustrated. This was evidenced by the look on his face and his strikes were becoming ferocious, vicious by the second. Around this time, Ino made an appearance, but she didn't say anything. She just settled at the back of the house, watching the two fight, her eyes firmly on Sasuke, even though she'd come here for Naruto. Worried about him, Sasuke threw a high-footed kick with his left foot, aimed at Naruto's shoulder. The kick was caught by Naruto's right hand. Moving shiftily, Naruto grabbed Sasuke by the throat and slammed him down the ground. His hands wanted to beat up the Uchiha. His feet wanted to crush him. But it was not worth it. Not when it would only serve to antagonize the Uchiha further. He really didn't want to deal with an Uchiha who was out to get him and he certainly didn't want to make Sasuke an enemy. Your movements are sluggish, and you are leaving gaps in your attacks. You can't hit anyone when charging without thinking, Naruto said before hitting the Uchiha on the forehead, lightly. Your mind is clouded. If you want to train with me, clear your mind and don't leave your intentions so clear that even a blind man can see. Now go home, your mother is waiting for you. Not a word left Sasuke's mouth as he shot up. Looked as if he was considering hitting Naruto from behind, but he shrugged his shoulders and walked away. Ino smiled nervously as the Uchiha neared her, 
Hello, Sasuke-kun? How are you? Sasuke just walked past by her, not even bothering to look at her. As far as it seemed, the Uchiha didn't look like he had heard her. But Ino knew better. Sasuke had heard her. He just ignored her. She frowned. Welcome to the party, Naruto said, walking past the blonde. Ino followed him without saying a word. She was too engrossed in her thoughts to think of a reply. Her body just moved automatically. Ino became aware when Naruto closed the front door of his new house. He walked towards two trees that were in front of the house and climbed up. Ino couldn't, so she sat down, her back pressed against the tree's trunk. Sasuke's become cold, Ino said sadly. I don't blame him though. He is going through a lot. It doesn't give him the right to ignore people though, Naruto said. His eyes looked down at the blonde, his treatment of you hasn't changed. Whether happy or cold, he still ignores you, that must sting. Ino frowned, it did sting. Naruto didn't care, just stating what he thought. He didn't understand what she felt for Sasuke. She didn't even think he knew where it stung. Shaking her head, Ino pressed down her thoughts to focus on the matter that brought her here. I overheard my father telling my mother about your episode. They said you lost your mind for a minute and that it was so serious the Sandane considered taking you for a psychological evaluation, Ino said, her tone revealing her worries. So you came on to check if it was true that I lost my mind or not? Naruto asked. Yes, Ino didn't deny it, but I also came because I was worried about you. The Naruto I knew would have just walked away. You always have control over your emotions. So, when I heard that you were rolling on the ground in laughter, I thought perhaps you'd snapped. I'm fine, Naruto stressed the words. I merely laughed because I thought it was funny. No, he corrected himself with a shake of his head, it was funny and I couldn't help myself. It wasn't funny Naruto. Ino nearly shouted. She calmed herself and repeated her words in a subdued tone. It wasn't funny. From where I was standing, it was amusing, Naruto said with a shrug of his shoulders. Perhaps I do have a twisted sense of humor. No you don't, Ino said, her tone hard. You hardly laugh at anything. I would have cried in that situation, not laugh. I don't think anyone in their right mind would laugh in that situation. Hum, so are you saying that I wasn't right in the head when I laughed? Are you suggesting that I momentarily lost my sanity? Casina.